The Hill reported former assistant FBI director James Kallstrom unloaded during a radio interview saying, the Clintons, that's a crime family, basically. It's like organized crime. I mean, the Clinton Foundation is a cesspool. This investigation was never a real investigation, Kallstrom continued. They never had a grand jury impaneled. And the reason they never had a grand jury impaneled, I'm sure, is Loretta Lynch would not go along with that. Meanwhile, Loretta Lynch was fighting to save her own hijacked position of the Department of Justice, pleading the fifth to Congress on secret Iran payments, during which... FBI Director James Comey's unprecedented admission of Clinton guilt 11 days before Election Day signaled that mutiny is swelling in the offices of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Zero Hedge reported, in an attempt to justify his actions, a leaked memo emerged on Friday evening courtesy of Fox News, which explains why Comey took the unusual step of deciding to inform Congress that the FBI had reopened its investigation into Clinton's private email server. The memo reveals two main arguments, a sense of obligation to lawmakers and a concern that word of the new email discovery would leak to the media and raise questions of a cover. I'm sure that some of you may have heard about a letter that the FBI director uh, sent out yesterday. It's pretty strange to put something like that out with such little information right before an election. Yeah. Donald Trump is already making up lies about this. I think it's time for Donald Trump to stop fear-mongering, to stop disgracing himself to stop attacking our democracy. We can't let him get away with this, can we? The Democratic Party has now transcended damage control and entered panic mode as Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman, Huma Abedin, Muslim Brotherhood plant numero uno, is no longer on the campaign trail after it was discovered that she did not turn over all the evidence pertaining to the FBI's email investigation of Clinton. Plenty of evidence still resided on the computer Huma shared with estranged husband Anthony Weiner, a.k.a. Carlos Danger, after being investigated for sexting with a 15-year-old girl. Currently, it is surfacing that Anthony Weiner is selling out the Clintons to save his own skin, essentially voiding Huma's immunity deal, forcing Abedin to either face jail time or sing like a canary. It is unthinkable uh, that the director of the FBI would take this action lightly, that he would put this letter forth to the Congress of the United States saying that there is more information out there about classified emails uh, 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 and, and call it to the attention of the Congress unless it was something requiring serious investigation. Now the stench of boiling corruption has landed squarely on President Obama's desk. The New York Post reveals that back in 2008, President Obama's transition team improperly emailed sensitive and confidential information about a candidate for a high-level government job according to newly disclosed WikiLeaks emails. That, on top of the Podesta WikiLeaks, supporting Obama's knowledge and use of Clinton's email server and the Clinton team's attempts to clean it up. Eventually, the emails will reveal Clinton Foundation racketeering that will bring down all of those on the take in Washington, D.C. Hillary's bogus poll-tampered 12-point lead is gone. Unfortunately, all that means is that it's quite possible that American lives could be in more danger. Things are getting so dire for the globalists, who still remain under the false impression that they are invisible, that you can hear the clock ticking on a major false flag operation to steer the rubbernecking of the Clinton dumpster fire towards something far more sinister. John Bound for Infowars.com. It's hard to believe we are now just T-minus seven days, one week, from the deciding election. Americanism versus globalism. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and I really want to endeavor in between guests today that are joining us to open the phones up with your specifics of whether or not you've been able to vote and not had your vote flipped from straight ticket to straight Democratic ticket or from Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton because those reports are coming in. It's in mainstream news, CBS, ABC. They're being forced to report it. From Maryland to Colorado, from Texas to 
Florida. It's happening all over the country. And front and center is the fact that we have in the WikiLeaks, Donna Brazil caught a second time giving questions to Hillary before the event happened. We've even got the video of, of one of the Democratic debates where the very question then got posed, and she has the nerve to continue to lie. This is just indicative of how it's all staged. We have them in the WikiLeaks just a week and a half ago admitting that they're over polling was their plan a year and a half ago to make Hillary look invincible and to have the news media they control, literally control. Think about that. Sit there and add 7 to 20 to 30 to 40 points in. It is simply unbelievable. When I tell people on the street, they say, hey, do you think Trump's going to win? I notice he's ahead of Hillary in a couple of polls now or neck and neck with her. And I say, do you understand that those very polls, if you read the methodology, are adding 9, 12, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, depending on the poll. Some ABC and CNN polls add upwards of 50%. This is on record. Of course she's winning those by 65, 68, 70%. You add 40 to 30, you're up there at 70. I mean, think about that. You're up there at 80. This lady, this lady's maybe 30, 40 points, maybe 35 if she's lucky. There is absolute disgust for her across the board. We've got a loaded roster today. Bev Harris joins us in the second hour. She is the nonpartisan. She's a Democrat, but she's nonpartisan in her investigations. Top expert, uh, undoubtedly, uh, in the modern era on election fraud but also on voter fraud, but she'll tell you election fraud is really nine-tenths of it generally. She's got huge new information out today. We're going to be premiering here in the second hour. Roger Stone is going to be popping in each day until the election and right through the election. Lou Rockwell is going to be joining us as well as David Knight hosting the fourth hour of Overdrive. But I specifically want to hear from you just boom. Did you have trouble? Where was it? What happened? Send us screenshots, send us photos, send us video when you're in the voting booth. Vote at Infowars.com is the place, and we're getting a lot of these videos coming in of not being able to vote Republican, of having your votes flipped if you vote straight ticket. This morning I went in to see my allergy doctor, and the nurse began to tell me, who's a very nice lady I've known for about three years, that basically a large percentage of her patients are coming in there saying their votes are being flipped. And she was even kind enough to start reaching out to some of them, and we're going to work on um, you know, having some of those folks on that it's happened to. A couple of them prominent people. I mean, this looks like this is epidemic. What do they do if Trump's really 15, 20, 30 points ahead, depending on the state? In a state like Texas, probably 25 points ahead. A state like Florida, 15, 20 points ahead, a lot of polls show. If you take out the oversampling, He's clearly 20 points ahead in Florida. You take out the oversampling in Ohio, he's 10 points ahead. Now, you add you know, 9, 10, 15 points, he's, he's, he's neck and neck. This is how they're doing it. And look, I know you know that, but the public is still not fully aware of this. Now, I did notice this weekend we posted an article dealing with the fact that in a whole bunch of big polls, so-called scientific polls, Donald Trump was now neck and neck with Hillary. And the commenters were flipping out saying, Alex Jones, you need to point out that these are oversampled polls and this is creating the perception that he's not really ahead. How dare you do this? I don't ride herd over my writers and the folks that post articles. They do a great job. We are undoubtedly, more than anybody out there, the main people exposing the fact, along with Drudge and a few others, that oversampling is the key to the whole scam. We've published the WikiLeak. We've covered it. Obviously, we're going to put snippets of mainstream news up. It's up to you to know the disinfo. And their argument is, well, other people that come on the site won't know that and will be deceived. That's what we're doing here is trying to expose the mainstream media. But if I try to decipher every lie they tell, it would be impossible. It just cannot be done. But it's kind of like comments I see like, you need to expose the Federal Reserve being private. Never talk about that. <laughs> you need to expose 9-11 and the shadowy forces involved. 
all we've done is put that on the map. But 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 I digress. I get people's frustration because we're dealing with a wall of corruption, a wall of lies. Now, when Roger Stone joins us coming up at the bottom of this hour, I'm going to ask him front and center, not just about strategy to win or not just what he expects to happen on Election Day. I want to get into the next shoe to drop because they claim they have scores of hours of this biographer of Trump and that they've sent nine interesting hours over to the news media in the last few months and that they're waiting to release something they claim is critical of black people. Now, we have Hillary Schiff saying she said the N-word and hates minorities and everybody else. We have all these other witnesses to it as well. We know their history in the Dixie Mafia and connections to the KKK and Robert Byrd. We know the whole background of doubling black unemployment and running all these scams and, 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 and the Clintons helping get payday loans into place to, to hurt poor people across the board. But clearly the last tape on Trump was edited, but he never made that point. You can hear the jump cuts in the audio to make it sound like something that it wasn't, to make it sound a lot worse. Now, who knows if they really have this tape? I think they would have released this tape by now with seven days out if, if they really had it or if it wasn't weak. They probably got something. They probably edited something together, but we have the WikiLeaks calling back black people dumb, uh, Clinton, calling Bernie Sanders supporters basement dwellers and, and baristas. By the way, nothing wrong with being a barista. That's one of the best paid jobs and service you can get. But I know, I know bartenders making 100 grand a year, but whatever. You're sitting here looking at this. We're down to the final stretch. What do you think the dirty tricks may be? And clearly, if they release some tape on election day or the day before, it's not meant to change the election. It's meant to put the whole thing into question because they know Hillary's losing. And the false flag, the triggering event, will be the civil unrest they've primed and prepared in the last eight years funding all these different racist and radical groups that are George Soros controlled. So bottom line, we are in an incredibly critical time right now, a time for gut checks, a time for focus, and a time to understand. Hillary is a literal crime boss, as the former deputy director of the FBI has come out and said. She represents an international mafia combine. And a vote for her is a vote for a methodology and political system that operates out of making people poor and controlled by a central government that's above the law. So quite frankly, I'm not a lesser of two evils person, but it could come out with Donald Trump saying racist things and I would repudiate it, but I would move on and I'd say Hillary is the racist in her real action and in who she hires and what she does and what she stood for. She's anti-human, period. It's gotten to the point where she is so evil and such next level bad that they could pull out, you know, some woman that claims Trump raped her or who knows what they'll make up or half-bake or twist. I'm going with Donald Trump because I know this is a referendum against world government, a referendum against tyranny, a referendum against crony capitalism and gangsterism. And here's the bottom line. Trump has done things that are irrevocably damaging to the global power structure. He has savaged them with incredible stamina, with incredible courage, with incredible truth. He has absolutely paved the way for the Americana system that was the greatest system the world has ever seen that will guaranteed make anybody who wants to work, even the wealthiest poor people compared to other parts of the world, and our middle class, the biggest the world has ever seen. It's a guarantee that we've been sold out by globalism. It's a guarantee we've been economically captured. It's a guarantee now. They want to finish the job, dumb us down, make us poor, break up our families. UT has a 29-point program you have to go through to wear a Halloween costume, and they're saying the police nationwide are going to be called to arrest you if someone thinks your costume is, is hurtful. This is an attempt at authoritarianism. 
it has to be repudiated, and America has to come together and understand that this is make it or break it time. There it is. Check out the University of Texas Insane 27 point checklist on Halloween costumes. This is the culture of control. This is treating people like their children and bullying them into submission. This is the control freak religion of fascist liberalism bullying us into submission. They know they're bullies. They know they're scum. They're horrible. Forget saying they're racist. They're anti-humans who admit they want to be rich. They want to make us poor. They hate seeing success that isn't theirs. They're the ultimate scumbags. Now, coming up, we're going to cover a smorgasbord of important intel with Roger Stone as I run a lot of this past him. But Matt was making the point this morning, and it's a great one, one of the producers, that Uma Abedin reportedly with his laptop with 650,000 emails, that sounds like you're trying to collect things. In fact, it doesn't sound like it. It looks like it. And what if we said the number one issue with Hillary having a private server with classified information, what is the number one issue in that? It's called espionage, and then it's called blackmail by private individuals, corporate actors, state actors. And Uma Abedin, her little confidant, hooked in with the Muslim Brotherhood, the Saudi Arabians, most of the big brains out there have always fingered her or pointed her out or called her out as a Saudi operative. And someone who's done that is Roger Stone. So during the last break, Matt was bringing this up to me, and I said, you know, you're right. And Stone says his sources point towards her being a serious operative. Her mother is the main author worldwide. She is the maven. She is the queen. She is the matron. She is the pusher. What's the term they use for that? The madam of sexual mutilation of women under Sharia law. I mean, again, imagine if Donald Trump was staying in a hotel room with a guy and, 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 and holding the guy's hand on TV uh, routinely. And then the guy's mother was the best, you know, top researcher publishing how great it is to cut women's genitals off. Donald Trump wouldn't get elected for 10 seconds, and he shouldn't. Uma Abedin's mom linked to shocking anti-woman book. Linked to it. She's the main pusher of it. The woman's a freak. There's Hillary with the women all in their hijabs. All the begging liberal women wanting to worship and learn how to wear hijabs. Actually, air UN ads in Germany going, I will wear the hijab. I will submit. Allah, 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 Allah. And the thing is, this is a culture that wants to make me submit. And I'm not going to do it. Not to the liberal socialists, not to the jihadi Islamists. Nobody! But God Almighty, and believe me, you don't represent it. New article, Infowars.com. Hackers likely stole Hillary's classified docs in 2014, Yahoo breach. Over 50 million Yahoo accounts were hacked, and Uma used Yahoo. Folks, it's foreign governments. It's everybody, but they blame the Russians. And we've got William Benny coming on later this week, former head of the NSA technical division, actually ran the physical war, helped bring down the Soviet Union. He's been saying, I think it was probably the FBI. I think it's a mole inside, and now we know he knows. It's people inside that are pissed, and that's coming out. And it was the inspector general of the intelligence community that called for the investigation to her server years ago. So, again, that's where it's coming from, not from the Russians, not D.C. leaks, not any of it. I mean, do you really think the Russians are just going to get all the hacks? And the Russians are good at it, folks. You think the United States doesn't have the people that dwarf that? <laughs> the United States built the Internet. Get that through your head. The United States and the UK built it as the ultimate spy grid and COG system. So we're going to get into that. We're going to get into their dirty tricks. What do we expect? What's the latest intel? Uh, all these incredible clips. All these Democrats leaving the sinking ship. Then there's DrudgeReport.com. We're going to go through all those articles. Trick or treat. FBI found the 650,000 emails on laptop. DOJ blocked foundation probe. Yeah, I love how we've got Harry Reid 
and the usual suspects running around and Hillary saying, oh, Kumi needs to step down when they were worshiping him just a month ago. And, oh, my gosh, what he's done is criminal. On and on and on. It's so political. When we have the DOJ on record blocking the investigation into the foundation, blocking the investigation into the servers, clearly blocking Comey, meeting on the airplane with Clinton, being part of the same law firms as the Clintons, all making money with each other. And then we have the FBI internal memos where on multiple occasions, the State Department staff under Hillary tried to bribe them with cush jobs paying double and triple as the heads of embassies overseas. Not the ambassadors, but the technical heads of embassy operations. Hey, how would you like 300 grand instead of 100 grand a year? And how'd you like to have not do any work and be in, say, Berlin? And they're like, is that a bribe? In fact, in the memos, it's just like out of the uh, movie that's based on a true story, Wolf of Wall Street, where the other FBI agent goes, say that again. Will you please come over here and say that to both of us. And they, did, they said, yeah, we'll give you jobs in front of multiple agents. It's the arrogance of these people. The arrogance. Look, the WikiLeaks are the bombshell. Trump is out in a speech, we'll play a clip in a few minutes, saying there could be bombshells inside of these 650,000 emails. Well, absolutely there's going to be bombshells in there, and we know Yahoo was hacked. Uh, that's probably where all this came from. That's what Aberdeen was using. Is Aberdeen using this to potentially blackmail the Clintons? That's why you'd have a treasure trove of that many emails. We know she's connected to Saudi Arabia. It's Roger Stone that has called out her profile as that of an intelligence asset. Uh, yeah, a female operative attached to a bisexual woman. They stay in the same hotel room together. Her whole family are basically Islamic operatives. I mean, we are penetrated big time. This is incredible. Uh, we have, again, Obama and Hillary communicating illegally on a server. They've been caught. The bombshells are already there. Are there more bombshells? Yes, but while we're looking for bombshells, we have all these giant bombshells. The Democrats calling black people dumb. Sanders uh, supporters dumb basement dwellers. Uh, fixing polls. Donna Brazil's been caught again with another stage question, caught in lies. This discredits the media, everybody. But WikiLeaks came out, Assange came out with a tweet last night. It's up on Infowars.com. And he said, this will be the end of Hillary. That the information coming out will be the end of Hillary unless she gives herself a pardon. And now I see what WikiLeaks is doing. When they said, oh, we'll be releasing things until the end of the year. They're going to let her steal it, maybe. She, she's probably going to fail. But even if they do, they'll have their cake and eat it, too. She's going to get in if they steal it. And then they're going to bring out the even more powerful info, the 33,000 and all the lies and her covering up. We already have her, but they're going to bring it out in total triplicate to totally discredit the neocon liberals and all the scum that have hitched their wagon to her. And we'll blow all them up politically. Media matters at all of them. It's devastating. i got to say, i got to hand to WikiLeaks. They're smarter than, than I thought. This is genius. And, and, and Roger Stone... It's now come out that Media Matters and the latest of uh, uh, Veritas, run by the White House, run by the Clintons, said, we are run by the White House, we're run by Hillary, and we were ordered to take out their MVP, that's what they called him, most valuable player, Roger Stone. So I'm feeling pretty good because I'm almost attacked as much as he is in Media Matters. I want to be the MVP. Now, this is just getting crazy. I mean, this is wall-to-wall -wall insane asylum. The next seven days, but you know it's going to be a circus after that. We're going to Roger Stone in here in just a moment. But first off, ladies and gentlemen, only 42 hours left. We're running this until Wednesday. On the highest quality storable foods you're going to find out there, freshly produced on a weekly basis at the top of the line facilities in Utah, 42 hours left to get up to the lowest special is 30% off. And it's already discounted. 30 to 40. And that's not just like a few things are 40. Most of it's 40. 30 to 40% off on InfoWars Select Storable Foods. And that's the name I came up with select. It doesn't mean it's a select of the My Patriot catalog. It's the whole catalog, but by that it's select high quality. Because I went out and selected the best company 
with the lowest price at a nexus point. You can find stuff five, six times you know, more expensive that tastes better. But this stuff tastes great, high quality, last 25 years. It's my main storable food buy. I've got some more gourmet stuff as well, but a very small percentage of it is that. Uh, and I'm going to get those folks to sponsor too. The point is 30 40% off. InfoWars Select, Survival Food, whatever I sell, you better believe I'm using it. It's what I believe in. 30, 40% off, that ends. We're extending it, but only 24 hours, and then it's gone. Brain Force, our incredible nootropic at InfoWarsLife.com. Here's mind-blowing, literally, Dave Warski uh, out of Vancouver, Canada. I am very impressed with Brain Force. I was expecting something, however. Uh, I, I was expecting something, however. It blew away my expectations. I enjoy taking it prior to playing competitive ice hockey. It allows me to focus and maintain a clear head, even under intense physical demand such as ice hockey. I even gotten some of my family members and families to try it, and they're impressed with the results. Yeah, we set out to have a low-cost, over-the-top, game-changing, clean, high-quality, organic nootropic. It's got uramate, you know, very clean, pure caffeine molecule, but everything else is just stuff the brain's already made up of. Some of it's prescription in Europe. Uh, great uh, energy boost, says Rob in Florida, from Florida, five stars. Clears your mind, sustainable energy, affordable. I try this product, quit energy drinks. Oh, yeah, it's just light years better than that. Definitely works better and keeps me focused all day with no crash like drinks. I've been taking this for a month, and I'm reordering it. By the way, I never asked Stone to do it. It became a big national story on CNN, MSNBC, Media Matters, after they you know, quarterbacked, attacking him for plugging brain force on air. I didn't know he was a customer of Brain Force, but he's into supplements. It's the best. Paul takes a lot of nootropics uh, because, you know, he's working 18 hours a day. Paul Watson, he now doesn't take those. He now takes Brain Force. It, it, it's the best. It's the best. $22 discounted. Now, at 30, it's a steal, folks, but it's 25% off and it's about to sell out. We won't have it for a few weeks, so take advantage of that. Okay. Roger Stone joins us. We have got so much to cover. Obviously, they're, they're floating that they've got some dirty trick. Uh, this biographer who's breaking his contract and, and, and claiming that there might be something in there disparaging towards black people. Before I ever endorsed Trump, I went and talked to people that have known him across the board. He's got an award from Jesse Jackson for hiring more blacks and putting him in management positions. I'm not going to get into some of the inside baseball, but let me tell you, Donald Trump really likes black people. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. Uh, and he likes everybody. Um, from talking to a bunch of inside baseball folks, he is a germaphobe, and that's it. They literally are floating this, though, because they're so desperate. She is way behind in swing states now. Four points uh, up in uh, major national polls. We'll break some of those down. That's with sampling 9 to 10 to 15 to 20 points, sometimes higher, against Trump. Now, I don't want people to stay home thinking we've got it in the bag, but the media is selling this idea that he's already lost, despite the fact Hillary's in free fall, the Democrats are deserting her, more pundits are deserting her. Uh, we've got all this amazing stuff unfolding right now. What is the truth of that, Roger Stone? Then we'll hit Uma Abedin. Why would she have 650,000 emails? You've always thought she was an intelligence operative. Well, she's sleeping in the same bedroom on the road with Hillary. Uh, we'll also cover that and the waterfront. Roger Stone, thanks for joining us from the StoneColdTruth.com. Glad to be here. So let's tackle this whole issue of floating uh, November surprises for Trump. You know, they have been uh, foreshadowing this uh, allegation that Trump has said something disparaging about black people for weeks. It's been a common rumor in the political echo chamber in Washington and New York. I think there is nothing to it. He is inordinately proud of the disproportionate number of African Americans who were showing up at his rallies and his events. These are not lily white events. He is, uh, at the last measure, getting a higher percentage of African American votes than Mitt Romney or John McCain ever got. Uh, and of course, there is this video, which I put up at Stone Cold Truth, of Jesse Jackson praising him for his standing up for the community and creating jobs and his contributions to uh, a number of uh, uh, you know African American nonprofits. So uh, this is a this is last minute desperation. They're going back to the old tricks. When are they going to accuse him of planning to cancel social security because that one's coming. These this are right out of the Clinton playbook, the Democratic Party playbook. But I think the country is in such bad shape 
and the voters have gotten so wise. They're they're wise to the whole mainstream media political establishment connection. The fact that one is covering for the other. I think we're heading for an upset. Uh, twice in this race, they have tried to write Trump off. It's over, folks. He's defeated. It's a disaster. More than that. I mean, they've done it probably ten race. times. They've probably done it ten times, but two big times. He'll never get the nomination. It's over. He's resigning. Intervention. It's over. New candidate to be brought in. Meanwhile, the, the Clintons, uh, I mean, their their narrative is so incredibly brazen. In other words, it's outrageous that the FBI director would, you know, raise this question a week before the election. No, it's outrageous that an FBI official who's heading the investigation's wife would take a $500,000 payoff from Terry McAuliffe, the governor of Virginia, and a Clinton financial crony. That's what's outrageous. Let's it's talk about outrageous. that. It's outrageous that James Comey would go through a litany of obvious crimes and then announce that she's not being prosecuted. That's outrageous. This this entire investigation uh, has stunk from the beginning. And now you have Harry Reid, of all people, a guy who, through his political committee, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to his granddaughter for jewelry that was allegedly given to uh, his donors. I don't think that jewelry really exists. Complaining about the integrity of the FBI and trying to change the subject to Trump's non-existent ties to Russia. This idea that Trump is propped up by the Russians or funded by the Russians or coordinating with the Russians or that I or anybody else associated with Donald Trump are working for the Russians is a canard. It's just a... I don't think that's working with the American people. And it's come out in WikiLeaks that it's Hillary and others. And, and Harry Reid that's sold out to the communist Chinese. It really is insane. So now seeing their vicious response to Comey and the FBI... What does that telegraph to you? What's really behind this Friday move of Comey? Is it just to hedge his bet because he thinks Trump's going to get in? I still fail to believe that, given what I know about Washington and how it works, that the FBI director would make this decision without the approval of his boss, the president of the United States. Now, I know that Obama says he was blindsided. I know Lynch, the attorney general, says she was blindsided. I just find that extremely hard to believe, given the chain of command and the impact of such a decision. He allegedly gave them no heads up on his previous decision as well. I find that hard to believe as well. Loretta Lynch is at this point so compromised, I don't know why she stays in office. Why do you think she took the fifth on the whole $1.7 to Iran? We know they got caught lying at first, saying it was $400 million, then $500 million, then $800 million, then a billion. Uh, I mean, wow. Normally when you see attorney generals taking the fifth, we're in the Nixonian era. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't think John Mitchell ever took the fifth. In fact, I think he fully and completely testified. So um, you have the most political and perhaps the most corrupt attorney general in American history, although... With Eric Holder before her, that's quite a statement. Uh, this is, the whole thing boggles the mind. And their position today, attacking the FBI, saying that they have no evidence, they have 650,000 emails to go through. There has to be something in there that got their attention to make such a bold and, and potentially cataclysmic move for Hillary Clinton. This, I perhaps, is the October surprise. Well, the only question is, does anybody else have those 650000 or will the FBI release them? Because Hillary keeps acting like she wants them all released. You think that's bravado? Yeah, I think she's, she's trying to run out the clock. I mean, she clearly understands they cannot conduct an investigation in the eight days that are left before this election. So she's, she is attempting to do strategically what I think anyone would do, go on a offense, stay on offense. But it's bluster. Uh, she knows, I suspect, that what's in this... What's in these emails should sink her. On the other hand, what we have seen from WikiLeaks already is extraordinary. It was only weeks ago that liberals were laughing that Alex Jones and Roger Stone and all their tin hat, tin foil hat followers, you know, uh, can pack it in because WikiLeaks is taking a uh, taking a hike. Well, how'd that work out? Not too well. Uh, it, the stuff that he is putting out, uh, I agree with you. I think it's genius. Just the, the, the constant drip, drip, drip of extraordinary information. And now we learn uh, that uh, Podesta was essentially, uh, Podesta and Band were playing with stock options 
Uh, Bill Clinton was playing with stock options uh, all out of Russia, yet they say Trump is the one in bed with Russia. I've talked to Donald about this. He has no Russian business interests. He has no Russian loans. He has no Russian partners. This is all BS. Uh, it, it's a trumped-up witch hunt to change the subject from the fact that the Clintons are epically corrupt, and they're the ones in the service of the Russians. Now, getting back to Uma Abedin, uh, we can't have Hillary in just because of the blackmail ability now of Hillary with her illegal server, all these foreign governments, all the things they've got on her. And Abedin, even though Hillary ordered them all to smash it with hammers, bleach it with these computer programs, what was she doing keeping this? I mean, this stinks to high heaven of espionage. You've always basically fingered her as, a, as some type of foreign Islamicist uh, Saudi operative. Well, I have traced her to the Institute for uh, Muslim Minority Affairs, which is an offshoot of the World Muslim League. Uh, and together, they are part of the Rabitha Rabatha Trust, which our Justice Department says financed uh, the attack on the United States on 9-11. All three of those radical entities are funded by Sheikh Arma Omar Abdul Nasif, um, who is uh, the most radical uh, of Islamics, a man who believes in jihad, a man who has been a funder of terrorism. So uh, those who say that uh, Huma is connected to the world Muslim, pardon me, to the Muslim Brotherhood, I think are confused by the fact that the journal that Huma co-edited uh, praised the Muslim Brotherhood, but the Muslim Brotherhood is largely Egyptian. Uh, her lineage is Saudi. She shows up in Washington prior to hooking up with the Clintons, and she's got a lavish lifestyle. She buys an expensive home in the Spring Valley area. She is uh, perfectly coiffed. She's wearing, she's carrying a fifteen hundred dollar handbag, one for every day of the week in a different color. All of these things connote given the fact that her parents are poor academics, that she's a government agent. Oh, absolutely. And now she's in the bedroom with Hillary. Uh, you know, folks have pointed out that Hillary needs to answer the question, will you pardon herself? If the press wasn't completely in her lap, uh, they would be asking her, hey, are you going to pardon yourself if criminal uh, information comes out? Because it already has. I mean, where is the press talking about Obama caught lying and in emails with a fake pseudonym, uh, identity. I mean, this is unbelievable. So, so Trump is out there saying, "Hey, I bet there's bombshells in this new information." What about all the old bombshells? Well, the mainstream media has played the exact opposite role that they played in the Watergate days. They believe their job is to suppress information that's detrimental to Hillary. Where in the '70s and '80s, '70s, the Washington Post, the New York Times, particularly felt it was their mission to uncover corruption, uh, and particularly corruption of the electoral process. Let's remember. Nixon went down not really for anything that happened in government. He really went down for the excesses in the 72 campaign, the dirty tricks and the break-in. Uh, and no one to this day has ever proved that he knew about the Watergate break-in in advance and approved it. As opposed to Hillary, who clearly, based on James O'Keefe's work at Veritas, knew about the efforts to incite violence at the Trump rallies. And she not only approved them, but she pushed for them. Also, the public seems to be uninformed on this, and I know you lived through the whole Nixon era as, as the youngest uh, member of, of, of his active team out there, one of the only folks, I guess, that didn't go to prison because it was proven you weren't involved in, in, in the dirtier aspects of it. But uh, looking at this, I mean, even the New York Times admits that a lot of pardons are for people who haven't even been indicted or convicted, and Hillary could pardon herself, and there's nothing Congress could do about that. Here's the headline from Law News, a... President Clinton could pardon herself, and Congress might be helpless to act. Uh, break that down for people. Well, I think it, on an intermediate basis, uh, remember there are elections in November, but she would not become president and be sworn in until January if she should manage to squeeze out a victory, which I think is looking less and less likely. The momentum in this race is very definitely with Donald Trump. A new uh, New York Times upshot poll has him up po four points in Florida. Uh, a trend reversal, uh, and his approval rating is higher than it has been in any previous poll, I believe. And that's with the oversampling of still of Democrats. Presumably. Uh, but you, so, I mean, the trend line is fairly positive. On the other hand, he's got some ground to make. 
Uh, what are the odds that Obama agrees to pardon her in the period uh, between the election and her inauguration in return for passing on the presidency, uh, in which case the, the, Tim Kaine would be sworn in as president, as I understand it. That's a pretty scary prospect, too, the Joker as president. Yes, sir. We've only got five minutes left here, and I appreciate you joining us each day, StoneColdTruth.com. Uh, Roger, I've been asking the questions. What else is on the board? What else are you concerned about? I mean, I don't want to say we've got this in the bag, but as you said, the momentum has totally shifted. Uh, just amazing things are happening. What what else could they pull? What other dirty tricks? I mean, what keeps you up at night? Uh, I'm still concerned about Election Day. I'm still concerned about their ability to hack the machines. Uh, in the one breath, they say the Russians are going to hack this election. In the next breath, they say these machines can't be hacked. Which is it? In one breath, the president says... Voter fraud does not exist. In the next breath, he says, but we're sending the U.N. to go monitor for it. Uh, you know, I, I'm always worried about the old I'm from the government and I'm here to help you line. Uh, so international observers, non-U.S. observers at our, at our polling places, this is deeply disturbing. And now, again, just this morning, I was on uh, with uh, Fernando Amandi, a Democratic talk show host, liberal, very lively guy, very smart. And he again repeated this canard that voter fraud does not exist. If you go to Drudge today, I think there's 30 different stories from areas around the country where it's already begun. Uh, you just wonder what world these liberals live in. Roger, shifting gears into another subject, uh, Danny Williams, who I believe is the illegitimate son of Bill Clinton from Little Rock, Arkansas, he's having a press conference tomorrow which snuck up on me. Uh, so you know, they're claiming we're all orchestrating this. I didn't even know this was happening until they handed it to me during the last segment. Uh, Danny Williams Press Events, I'm trying to now send a reporter uh, of Little Rock, Arkansas, who says he's the uh, biracial son of former President Bill Clinton. A lot of evidence shows he is, uh, is going to be holding a press conference in Washington, D.C. for a major announcement regarding his effort to get the former President Bill Clinton to submit a DNA test to confirm or dispel his uh, father or the paternity, and that it's uh, Tuesday, November 1st, 2016, at high noon. That's tomorrow, the National Press Club in the Peter Zinger Room, Z-E-N-G-E-R Room, 529 14th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. So that's tomorrow, the National Press Club. We're going to tweet this out. I'm going to put, put this on Facebook, and um, obviously everybody should be there. Uh, that's another important facet, isn't it, Roger? Well, it's very interesting. I'm going to be curious to see what he has to say. You know, I interviewed him uh, for my book, The Clinton's War on Women. There's an entire chapter on him. Uh, and then in the paperback edition, um, I received a lot of new information that I didn't have when the first book went to deadline. So I actually updated uh, that with an appendix uh, at the end. We now know that the 1999 uh so-called DNA test conducted by uh, the star tabloid was directed by David Kendall, who was at that time hired by Robert Altman, a Clinton crony and appointee, to be the general counsel for the star. So this was a put-up job. We know that the alleged DNA test, which supposedly showed that Clinton was not William's father, um, had to be inconclusive because they had no sample of Bill's DNA. They used a written report that was attached to the Ken Starr impeachment report that he sent to the Congress. And the problem with that is there were two tests that were utilized to determine paternity, but they only included the results of one. On the basis of that information alone, no forensic scientist I interviewed for my book thought you could make a decision. Well, that's right. You can't. So, so we're out of time, but the two articles on Infowars.com, I want to ask your opinion on. They just went up. Top pollster. The dam is about to break. Hillary is hemorrhaging. Uh, he says multi points a day. It's over. Uh, are the polls about to come out? That's uh, Varney and Co. on Fox. That's Infowars.com. Uh, Peter Thiel has come out saying Trump is the future, opening up the Republican Party, which is absolutely true, uh, absolutely a, a reformation of the horrible blue blood scum that had been in control of it for so long. Do you agree with those statements? Uh, I absolutely do. Uh, for those who think that the, that, uh, that the Trump movement is something the party is going to get out of its system and that were he to narrowly lose, that he and his supporters will disappear into the night, they said the same thing about Goldwater. 
Remember the party elders said, "Okay, the party's gotten over this. Now we'll return to." And then Reagan, the Reagan came out of that. Yes, that was it. Transformed the party. The Trump movement will transform the party. And do you agree that, that that Trump seismically is three times what Barry Goldwater was? Well, unquestionably, because he's a master of uh, of the media in a way that Goldwater is he three times or five times or ten times. A hundred times. I mean, he's a, he's a master of the media. I agree. And I agree. We've already won. It's going to be a hard row. We just can't let them start nuclear war. The only way they win, we're winning the culture war. We're the true liberals. And Roger Stone, you're the tip of the spear. God bless you, my friend. Glad to be here. Seven days out, folks. The nightly news at seven. We're going to be covering it. We're going to be doing special, uh, you know, uh, just flash announced broadcast. I'm putting round tables together. We're going to broadcast 50 plus hours, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I forget what it comes out to, but from 11 a.m. right through to the Wednesday show. Uh, we're going to broadcast continually from 11 a.m. right through the next day, right into the next day to 3 p.m. Whatever, it's like 54 hours, something like that. Infowars.com forward slash show is where the video links are. But very powerful article by Kit Daniels. Peter Thiel, uh, Trump unleashing new Republican Party. What Trump represents isn't going away. Yeah, no kidding. And I want to explain something. Ron Paul, you the listeners of the show, Matt Drudge, World Net Daily, the Liberty Movement, the Patriots, the, the, the militia movement. We're just Americana standing up and taking action and kicking out the globalists that have hijacked our country. That's why they're so angry that, quote, InfoWars is so mainstream and InfoWars seems to write the narrative. I'm not writing the narrative. I analyzed the true globalist plan correctly. Now the world is responding globally. The globalists are in trouble. This incredibly positive things are happening. Never forget that. We are winning the overall war. You know why Media Matters and CNN and everything think that like we're scripting everything with Trump and scripting everything with Roger Stone? It's because that's how they do stuff. They get top-down orders. They came in and said, hey, Danny Williams is having a press conference. And I had said when he was here like two weeks ago doing a you know, press deal, I said, can you contact us on Facebook? And I've been, I, I, I interviewed his aunt you know, 20 years ago. I said, you ought to go do it at the National Press Club. And then I kind of forgot about it and wandered off. And then next up, he's at the National Press Club tomorrow. And I'm sure it'll be Jones manipulated the whole deal from behind the scenes. No, that's how you guys do it, not us. Absolutely ridiculous how you were so centralized. Now, uh, let's go ahead. See, you can't beat us because we're not centralized. And we're promoting prosperity. That's like selling snow cones in hell. Now, remember this clip. This is a year ago. Donald Trump unloads on Hillary, Uma Abedin, and Anthony Weiner. What a crew of weirdos. Who would want to hang around with any one of those freaks? They all look like somebody who'd be like a pervert or something. And they, of course, they are. Uh, but notice how right he was in the epic rant. Now he's back again. But, but first, let's go to that clip. Here he is. So Uma now is one of the people that it all sort of came through Uma. Who is Uma married to? One of the great sleazebags of our time. Anthony Weiner, did you know that? This is April 2015. She's married to Anthony Weiner. You know, the little bing, bing, bing. <laughs> I love you very much. So... Now think of it. By the way, if they come out and claim Trump so hates Uma black people, he's got a big wild card. He's getting classified secrets. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's quite, it's not exactly the Danny Williams type deal, but close. Who's a perv. <laughs> oh, he is. He is. So she's married. Now, these are confidential documents. She's married to this guy who's... And guess what happens to Anthony Weiner? A month ago... I see he went to work for a public relations firm. Do you believe it? Now, if you think that Uma isn't telling Anthony, who she's probably desperately in love with, in all fairness to Anthony, because why else would she marry this guy? Can you believe it? <laughs> can't see straight. But if you would... <laughs> can't wait till we have this guy's president. So Uma's got... It's coming through Uma. She's got a lot of stuff, a lot of information. Who knows? So she's married to a bad guy. I know Anthony Weiner for a long time. I knew before they caught him with the bing, 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 right? And he was a bad guy then. It turned out that he was a really bad guy. So she's married to Anthony Weiner. Do you think there's even a 5% chance that she's not telling Anthony Weiner now of a public relations firm what the hell is coming across? Do you think there's even a little bit of a chance? I don't think so. Are there any... 
Now, let's go to this latest clip. We'll go out to break with this where he says they may have found the mother load. Will Trump be right again? I mean, you know, some were saying a smoke screen. Maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe Limbaugh's wrong. Here it is. If she never heard the word email, do you think she'd be a very happy woman today? Now, it was just learned, by the way, that they found 650,000 emails on the current investigation of somebody else. You know, in the diamond business and the coal business, it's cold, don't worry, we're putting your miners back to work. Clean coal, clean coal. They call, this could be the mother load. You know? This could be the 33,000 that are missing. This could be the 20,000 that are missing. This could be the 15,000 that are missing. Three weeks ago, they're missing a big box of emails. Think of it, 650,000. What do you have to do to do 650? Just If you sat and did like this, one, two. She was collecting three, stuff. You'd be there for weeks. He's an operative, you can smell How it. How can you have 650,000 emails? Anyway, they have 650,000 that they found. It was just reported. I would think they have some real bad ones, but we're going to find out. Look, hey, maybe not. Oh, we maybe got the not. second, third, and fourth hour coming up. Bev Harris, the expert in election fraud, is about to be on the worldwide. Well, the articles are up on Infowars.com. They just went live. We've got top pollsters reporting that the dam has broken. Hillary is hemorrhaging. And that polls show massive swings against her. Now, they've been sampling nine, in some cases, 40, almost 50 points in CNN and ABC polls. More Democrats than they do Republicans. And I tell people this and they go, really? It's been in mainstream news. So is it that a form of fixing things? And it's in the WikiLeaks that Hillary said we should basically control the outcome and stage and rig the Palestinian election. That was back when she was Secretary of State. We've got that clip coming up. So to have President Obama say election fraud, what is that? It's crazy. I mean, they know what happened to Al Gore in 2000. I'm a nonpartisan guy, but the evidence pointed towards him being robbed. A lot of conservatives got mad at me. I got dumped on a lot of stations because they're like, well, what do you mean? You know, Bush is a conservative. And I'm like, no, he's not. Well, now we've seen massive, massive evidence uh, coming in of major election fraud since 2000. I mean, certified in Ohio, you name it. So to have Obama counter myself and Trump and say it doesn't exist, but then say, but it's the worst ever, the Russians, we've got to basically federalize it, is schizophrenic, or maybe they, they think we're dumb. It's kind of like Bloomberg uh, on Friday said we should let illegals vote and cities are passing laws, let them do it, And uh, but Trump's insane, it's not happening. No, CBS News, they're all reporting all over the country, from Texas to Colorado to New York to Michigan to California, that dead people are voting and illegals are voting. It's going on. There's Bloomberg. Some citizens want their non-citizen immigrants to vote, and it's, it's happening. San Francisco considers opening up local elections to newcomers. It's already happening. My issue here is the integrity of the system is what it's all about. And Beth Harris, uh, again, is a former... I guess, federal crime investigator expert, a fraud expert. I mean, her, her whole bio is so lengthy, I don't want to butcher it. We really appreciate her joining us. It's, it's hard to get her on because she really has her nose to the grindstone. We're going to uh, give out her website on there as well. I know there's several, so I'll let her give out the one that she thinks is best. She was behind the whole hacking democracy, one of the top documentaries in U.S. history or world history, uh, showing election fraud, documenting it. Uh, blackboxvoting.org uh, is, uh, again, her main site. It's incredible. She's got a new video out today that I'll let her set up and tell you about. We'll play a few minutes of it. But the full video uh, is on blackboxvoting.org and infowars.com. But for anyone to say it doesn't exist just isn't living on planet Earth. So I want to ask her what she thinks that signifies and what early info she's seeing uh, with early voting that we know some of the heaviest ever recorded. And, we, and they were saying they thought it would show Hillary having a lead early on. But for some reason, it doesn't show that. So now the press isn't reporting it. And I understand Bev probably doesn't have a dog in this fight. I haven't asked her what she thinks of Donald Trump or Hillary, uh, but is just trying to work on the integrity of our system. That's why she's the leading advocate and researcher, in my humble view and in most people's view, uh, on elections here in this uh, good old USA.
So, Bev, thanks for coming on with us. Well, it's nice to be back. Yeah, I have been working a lot. <laughs> what is the best website to give out? Black uh, Box Voting? Blackboxvoting.org, yeah. All right. Uh, where should we begin? Well, you know, uh, we've found some new information, and I, I think it's the, the missing piece uh, that we didn't have before. A gentleman by the name of Benny Smith out of Memphis, Tennessee, um, discovered what I would characterize as a, a master key, which essentially lets one person control with invisibly and with remarkable precision down to the precinct level and down to the type of voting, early voting and so forth, or whatever type they want, uh, many different locations at once, multiple counties and multiple states. It has actually been in the system uh, since it it's, it is put in the system in 2001, but it was it came into wide use in 2006. Uh, but it kind of took someone with a special set of skills to know what to look for. Uh, he didn't just you know, like do like most of the people did, where he says, "Well, let me just look at the program and see what I think." He is a guy who has some background in political uh, forecasting and so forth, and he knew. Uh, what would be needed. He kind of went, let me design what I think would be needed in order to succeed with widespread election fraud. And after he did that, he went, now let me see if the pieces that I know are necessary are built into the system. They should not be. And he was amazed when he found, after looking at the files, that the pieces were built in to commit very large-scale fraud using a feature that had been very little known before. And you have this amazing video on your site. We've also just published it. How America's elections are hacked, missing link, discovered. Top election fraud expert Bev Harris exposes election electronic voting machines. This is a big, big deal. So let's take some time out and uh, walk through this, th this amazing discovery. Sure. Well, you know, the thing that he felt was needed, which uh, I didn't really understand until I met him and actually started putting together this video. He said the one thing you need, the key element, is you need to have the votes counted as fractions. You need the votes to be counted with decimal places, like you count money. You have to have um, not just if a vote is a dollar, you also have to have cents on the end of it. It's like 16,000 point three one, right? Why do you need now that will not show. It's hidden, but you need that because, and he, he said, you know, you never, there's one thing you don't know, you can't know before the election, and that's how many people will show up at each polling place in each precinct. So if you start doing things like I'm going to do every third vote or I'm going to add 100 votes here, you're going to get, you're not going to be very precise. Instead, you need to do what in finance they call an allocation. You say, whatever number of people show up, the guy is going to get X percent of those votes, whatever they are. Now, think about this. If you have 100 votes and you say, my guy's going to get 43 percent, that's 43 votes. But if you have 99 people show up, what's going to happen? You're going to end up with 42 point something, something, something votes. So if your system is not capable of counting votes with decimals, it can't do that allocation. And what, so what he did was he knew that that's how it would have to be done, and it would have to be very specific down to the precinct level. So he actually went looking and said, let me see. This is, the databases can be configured any way you want, and they should be configured and used to be configured to count each vote as a whole number. It's called counting it as an integer, a whole integer. So he went in and looked and said, let me see. It should count it as a whole integer. And sure enough, they had changed the setting in all of the voting machines in America, uh, now this Whoa. is the master computers. This is not the machines out in the precincts. This is the master computers that control all the voting machines. Bev, Bev this is incredible. And, and again, time and time again, you and your researchers tirelessly around the country have exposed the different ways they're doing it. And so I guess as a you know, top you know, fraud investigator, you're able to reverse engineer, okay, if we are going to steal it, how will we do it? Let's look for this. 
and then sure enough, you've you know you've caught them dialing in remotely. It's you've amazing. caught them. Yeah, you know, with you. In other words, anybody can sit there and go, "Well, this looks like a vulnerability." Theoretically, this is not a theory. This is real. This is something that was put into the system. They actually changed the setting. We can we can actually find we can actually go back and figure out now that we know it exactly the date that the setting was changed, and that it migrated to all the other manufacturers in the U.S. So now, at this point. Um, votes, the setting is in there to be able to allocate votes by percent to in, in basically 99% of the votes in the U.S. Now, what that means is that, and, and then he went on and he, he basically proved it. He said, now that I know that's in there, I think I can allocate the votes. And it is stunning when you see the demo. It's let's be clear. Let's be clear. You're you're finding this in the voting software. You go in. It's this algorithm or system to be able to basically program it to show the outcome you want by shaving votes. I mean, in, in a lay person right. uh, uh, who's not a you know expert like you or a top uh, computer programmer, what's happening? Yeah, and 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 think about this. You've got all these different precincts. You know, I've, I've, it's been so hard to watch TV knowing what I know and watch them up there getting it completely wrong. And you see these people on TV saying, well, including so-called experts, which I'm so disgusted with at this point, like, well, it couldn't be done because the blah, 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 blah. No, this can be done by one or a couple of people across whole jurisdictions. I actually... Um, we didn't want to write the story unless I was absolutely sure. So not only did I see him do it, but I had him show me how it was done. And uh, I took some vote databases, real vote databases that I have. One of them was the entire state of Alaska, the vote database from the 2004 election. I was able to change every precinct in the state of Alaska in four seconds. Whoa. Bev Harris is our guest, top election fraud expert, uh, the woman behind, of course, uh, exposing 2004, 2000, 2008, 2012, it's been certified in multiple states that fraud was taking place. Uh, the lady behind the uh, top documentary out there on election fraud, Hacking Democracy with HBO. And in live time with, with the computer experts, they are manipulating and changing the votes. If you're a radio listener, it's on screen. For people at Infowars.com forward slash show, we're going to skip this network break. This is too important. Uh, we then have the article on Infowars.com, how American elections are hacked uh, as missing link discovered. This is bombshell top vote fraud expert Ben Harris exposes electronic voting machines. I mean, this is so upsetting that I'm sitting here uh, uh, actually getting short of breath. I mean, I, I, this rarely happens. I'm having an anxiety attack. On air, folks, that's a normal response, by the way, because this is just so painful to know we've got the WikiLeaks where they're rigging the polls, telling them how to oversample. We've got them, uh, you know, how to set up the Bernie supporters. Uh, we've got them how to manipulate the media and, and just to see the corruption and to know the corruption that Bush was involved in and nobody got in trouble and just to see it getting worse and worse and worse. And now to have you with the smoking gun evidence uh, this is just unbelievably amazing. I, I'm just asking, how do we get this out to everybody, Bev? Well, um, you're quite a help, and I, you know, I'm going to be um, sending it out to all of my lists and all of my media lists. Um, and you know, this is maybe the mainstream pre uh, press is a little scared to report this at this point, but I do know that mainstream press has actually come to Benny Smith's house and videotaped this, and they know about it. So if in a, a week or so we don't start seeing this in the mainstream press, it's because we know why. You know, the same old, same old, same reason they don't report WikiLeaks, because they know about it. Well, that's right. And again, oh, if it's Bush or the Republicans involved uh, in chicanery, well, that's that's something, you know, has to be exposed. But if it's if it's Hillary and George Soros and these big multinational combines and the big banks that are 20 to 1 giving to Hillary, it's the very same kleptocratic corporate system that wants to block a populist movement. I mean, taking Donald Trump out of the equation, uh, clearly the big powered 
uh, money interests do not want Trump in. They do not want Brexit to happen. They do not want Russia to get out of the EU. That's my view on it. What is what or, or to have Russia, you know, get out of the whole globalist relationship with the EU. That's my view on it, Beth Harris. What is your view? Well, you know, you said something that really resonated with me when you said you almost get short of breath and so forth. The, the difference between this, which is called fraction magic, if anybody just wants the simple route, they can go to YouTube and put in two words, fraction magic, and they will get to this video. But the difference is this is really real. And even though I've been doing this work for so many years, and of course you have too been doing this kind of work, when you see that something is really real, it still takes your breath away. Yes. It's still incredibly painful. And I had the same reaction. It's This is painful to watch and painful to know about, but it's really real. Wow, I didn't know you had the same response. It's just, it's knowing you're being robbed. It's like coming home and your stereo and your grandmother's vase is gone and your wife's jewelry is gone. That's happened to most of us and you're out of breath. It's not losing the things. It's the feeling of violation. I think yeah. it's the... It, yeah, it's, it's coming up against, well, it's, I, I have this reaction when I, when I come directly up against abuse of power. There's another clip in the video that's quite shocking, which was video taken during an investigation in a particular election by me and a Florida citizen named Susan Pinchon. And you see actual video of power. Are you there? Uh, I'm sorry, I think you hit your, uh, please repeat oh, it. Okay. Anyway, use the actual video of abuse of power, and you have that terrible reaction where um, in a legal requirement required by the courts, they are supposed to turn over the list of the information on their um, election computer, and she catches them running out of the building with the computer. Now, when you see stuff like that, it's abuse of power. You know what you're facing, and they, they treat you very badly, and they, uh, they, they just um, get very... They start blaming you for the fact that they're running out of the building with the computer and wow. you had the temerity to videotape them doing that. You see this guy in the video saying, get that camera out of my face and get her away from me. You know? Well, yeah, you're running out of the building with the computer, with the election information that the court has ordered you to turn over. Um, but they, it's, it's when you confront abuse of power up close and personal, it is extremely painful, and it takes courage to do. And I just take my hat off to the citizens that are out there um, doing work to actually open up the government and get it transparent again and take it back. Bev Harris, I've been on air 21 years. I've interviewed you probably 30 times over the years. I've never been this blown away watching the video. Uh, it's, it's, it's on screen right now for radio listeners. They can go to Infowars.com. It's in the article how America's elections are being hacked, missing link, discovered. This is just so bombshell. Or just go to blackboxvoting.org. Fraction Magic is the top story there on the left. Get this video from YouTube and make it go super viral. Uh, Bev, if it's okay with you, I'd love to mirror the video on my sure, Facebook. My yeah, sure, of course. Fantastic. So, so we'll upload it to InfoWars uh, channel so that our millions of subscribers can see this. This video needs 50 million views. In fact, every voter... In America, you know, they're talking about 100 million people voting or something. Everybody needs to see this and understand this is going on. I mean, this is probably undoubtedly the, the most shocking election news, the most bona fide, caught red-handed, built in to manipulate the outcome. And then people running away with the computers like something out of a Hollywood movie. I, I, I mean, I am speechless. So... so I'm going to play a, a minute and a half excerpt that's the intro to the piece. And then when we come back from break, we can actually play the part she was just talking about for radio listeners uh, with audio again. But, but Bev, just spend a few minutes now, again, for new listeners that just tuned in, describing what type of system this is, how many machines this is on, how yeah. this is done. Yeah, this is the... Now, everybody thinks about the voting machines out in the precincts. As Benny Smith, who, who developed this, uh, basically figured this out, says, why go to those machines? I wait for the votes to come to me. At the end of the day, all the votes come to one central location. They so it's the central tabulation computer, center. And that's where they're controlled. Okay, start over. I'm sorry. It's just so incredible for me because we're all being robbed here, folks. We're all not being robbed of our refrigerator that's bad enough or our car. Our literal republic, our democracy 
And we have this champion, this Joan of Arc, literally. I don't want to kiss your... I mean, you're an amazing lady. Thank God for you, Bev. You just keep... What scares me how it's so few people that keep coming through over and over and over again in this fight, uh, like, like you know, the folks at Project Veritas or you or Julian Assange. I mean, Bev Harris is right up there with those folks, and we all have this sense of being robbed. But the good news is we can do something if we get this video out. So start over for folks. Explain how it's done. Yeah, and so there's this one central computer, which at the end of the day, all the votes come to it. That's where you take it. You don't run around to 5,000 different things in precincts. You wait till the votes come to you, and then you have your way with them. And uh, it's very, very precise. Uh, it's invisible. And uh, there's absolutely, it doesn't matter whether the system's on the Internet or not. None of the stuff that they say is a protection matters at all. You have your way with them. Um, then you, once you control the votes in whatever way you want, for whatever target you want, um, you know, the election is done. Now, there is something new that can be done, and this is really exciting because um, it's kind of scaring the pants off of them, actually. Um, and at the very end of the video, I make sort of a cryptic reference to it, but we didn't realize that more than half of the voting machines in the country now take a picture of every ballot. Even the touchscreen machines that supposedly have no paper are keep keeping an image of every ballot. But now think about this. You run a paper ballot through, and it takes a picture of it, and that's just an electronic file, right? That's, you should be able to get that under public records re uh, request, right? It's just a file, and you ought to be able to get all those images. In fact, there was one county in California that was putting all those on the web. Why not? When they put them all on the web, guess what happened? Everybody looked and found out there was a whole precinct that never got counted at all by the machine. Wow. Um, yeah, so, I mean, essentially, these ballot images are and must be public record, and people must ask for them. Now, let me tell you what happened when a gentleman from Arizona asked for them. He said, okay, I want under my freedom of information rights, I want all your ballot images. Basically, you can do your own recount that way, right? And we did find that they do not succumb to the fraction magic attack. Well... When he asked for them, they said, oh, uh, well, uh, we destroy them every day. Oh, okay, my goodness. What do you do? You bleach bit in the hammer? I mean, what's going on here? It's a, it's a crucial audit record, and it's against the law to destroy them. Yeah, Hillary so ought to hire them. He, he, went to he went to a judge. He got a temporary restraining order to block them from um, destroying them in the November. Well, election. Bev Harris, stay there. This is the most bombshell interview ever. I mean, we're both breathless here. I know a lot of you are. This is so documented. When you see the video, it's on blackboxvoting.org. It's on infowars.com, the stories. Get it out to everybody. I never even knew this, but I'm sure Drudge is going to want to link to this. This is so huge. Uh, or to your investigation. Uh, regardless, it needs to get out there. We're going to upload these videos right now to our Facebook and to our YouTube. Uh, we're going to take this interview with Bev and edit it down and basically cut me out and, and put it out tonight to go viral. Oh, wow. But I'm also very excited because I think this is probably the strongest evidence she's ever got. Uh, we'll, we'll ask her if I'm right when we come back. Stay We're with us. The There's nothing bigger when it comes to theft, I guess, than, than taking somebody's life. There's nothing bigger when it comes to theft unless it's murder, and that's election fraud. That's stealing someone's country and then acting like, hey, you voted. You're all for it. You support it. And then to have Obama. I mean, imagine if Bush would have said there's no such thing as election fraud, period. No, they would just deny they were doing it. And both sides were doing it. Bev Harris is an American writer, activist, and founder of Black Box Voting, Inc., a national nonpartisan nonprofit election watchdog group. She helped to popularize the term black box voting while authoring a book on the same title. I've been interviewing her for like 16, 17 years. In 2003, she discovered the source code of a voting machine manufacturer, Diebold Election Systems, which now operates under the name Premier Election Systems. After examining these files, Harris wrote an article, July 8, 2003, detailing how the bypass passwords that manipulate election results on Diebold Jim's central tally system. It's all done centrally. Harris followed a whistleblower lawsuit alleging that Diebold Election Systems had made false claims when selling their system to Alameda County, California. Diebold paid the state of California $2.6 million. To settle the case, blackboxvoting.org has now released, she's done hundreds of other big epic, you know, wins for everybody. Now, they have documented how they, at the central tabulation systems, regardless of what type of machines they are, can then take the data and shave 
it with an algorithm or fraction magic that anybody that's you know had math class knows about, and they have video of it. This should be the number one story in the country. It's bigger than even Hillary and the emails and the corruption. This is so huge. I want to play a minute and a half intro where it's her description. And then the, the film gets really powerful. Here it is. Uh, there's a lot of assumptions being made by the public. And when you actually go out in the field and try to authenticate each step, it's very, it's very surprising, really. I'm tired of her camera being on me. I don't want her near me. Okay. And there's no this lady. In other words, we're not able to give them what they what they want at all. Hey, hey, hey. Watch what happens if you cap a candidate's results at 43% or any percent. Again, for radio, this isn't very powerful, but the video it is. It just shows how they do the math in front of you. And they show it on the computer screen happening. Do, 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 do. Controlling results do, by precinct do, 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 do. requires use of decimals. And now imagine if the default setting is to hide the decimals. Right now, the GEMS program is installed and counting votes in 25 states and 616 jurisdictions. But fractional counting began to migrate from the GEMS program into other vendors. Voting systems which count votes as fractions may count as many as 99% of all American votes in 2016. We have these systems that are just simply not operating in a way that's accountable to the accountable to the public and again we're going to take this mini film and with our big production crew and everything obviously put out some special reports today over the next few days i want to get the crew to be on this 100 percent because the public back in 2000 wasn't awake to fraud like they are now they are supercharged mega awake and then it just gets more powerful as they go breaking it down uh, Bev, do you think that's an accurate statement to say people are more informed now about election fraud than they were in the past? Yeah, I think that, and you know, um, they really jumped on Trump when he said, I might not necessarily accept the result, and they acted like it was undemocratic. No, what's undemocratic is to tell the public and the candidates that they must accept a result that they can never authenticate. That is not de democratic. We were not set up like that. And the public has an absolute right to be able to authenticate every essential step of the election. So telling us that we have to accept it, but we can never see the evidence is the most, uh, it, I, I don't even have words for what that is. I don't know what that is. It's propaganda. It's you total know? contempt. It's total hubris. Yes, it is. It's it's impunity. It's like we can do what we want. And you know, you mentioned that you said that it was uh, we were a nonprofit. I want to update you on that because I we stripped the nonprofit status away from we ourselves did from black box voting in January of this year, and there's a reason for that. As a 501c3, I was not permitted to say anything that could help or hurt a candidate, and I knew coming into this year that. I could not have that restriction on me. So we basically stripped that out, uh, and we are operating as a sole proprietorship right now. I'm running it, and I'm doing the exact same work. But let me tell you a little bit partisan, but I, I, I don't really care. You know, which in, It's not about candidates and which one wins, but it's about the process, right? Um, but one thing that I have noticed with the Clinton machine is that they telegraph what they're going to do, they build a media narrative around it so people will accept the result. And so one thing that has alarmed me very much is that I've been watching a media narrative that basically is targeting Georgia, Utah, and now Alaska, indicating that those are in play and they might go, you know, might, might reverse trend and go for Clinton. Uh, Georgia, Utah, and Alaska are some of the very few states who are 100% using this system with the fractional counts. And each one is controlled by one central power. So when they, knowing what I know about what this system can do, if they said if this particular gem system was going to be used statewide, which states would it be? There's only four. There's Georgia, Utah, Alaska, and Mississippi. That's it. So to see three of the four suddenly saying they're in play, what a surprise. They haven't been for years and years, but now they're in play. That telegraphs to me that they plan to take those states or try. You know, Bev, I'm not just saying this. It, it, it's so amazing to talk to somebody who's so immersed in this and, of course, was a storied, uh, very successful fraud investigator previous to taking this on to, to just to be able to have you on and, know, and see how astute you are because – 
almost everybody else I talk to in the media or in research doesn't get it, but the mainstream media and the big think tanks will tell you what they're going to do before, how they mm -hmm. package the propaganda, how they roll it out. And exactly, they're telling us that those states that were normally Republican are now uh, going to go for Hillary. And as you said, you're more of a liberal, but a classical liberal, a real liberal, the type of liberal I respect that tells the truth no matter what. So I don't put words in your mouth, but as a liberal, uh, yes. I mean, is it not clear that Hillary and the media are trying to sell the idea that there is an election fraud and that Trump's going to lose by a landslide when the polls and everything else show something opposite? Let me put it this way. Uh, of course, things have been very surprising of late. But if she is still viable in any way, whether or not she wins, she will win. Wow. Please say that again. Whether or not she wins, she will win. Now, she may be from, removed from office afterwards, and, and as you may recall, Richard Nixon was right in the middle. He had been four months into Watergate scandals and was reelected and removed from office later. Um, but what's so disturbing about that is, you know, there's actually some Republican elites who might prefer getting her in and removing her from office. Oh, of okay, course, of course, of course. They can't control. Of course, exactly, exactly. The whole power structure uh, is against Trump. I mean, whether he's perfect or good or bad, I mean, if we claim we're against the corrupt power structure, then how could we not be for Trump? I mean, I'm sorry. Well, you know, and I, I really feel like this is, um, I'll say this as well. Um, whatever anyone thinks about the candidate, I will say that when he has brought to the front the issue of tampering with elections. It's one of the most important services that could have been done in the United States ever. Really important because it was taboo for the media to talk about it. And it forced them to talk about it. Now, they put a whole bunch of, you know, happy faces on it. Well, it can't be done because blah, 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 uh, which was kind of nonsense. But it forced it out into the public, into the open. And I think... You know, that's the kind of the beauty of actually having the real public actually pick their candidate is because you may, you may get someone who, at, you know, at first glance, you, you kind of go, eh, I, I don't know about that. But it can make the pendulum start to go back the other direction when that happens. And I just think that that, that alone was just so important because we cannot, I mean, if not now, then Sometime, if we keep doing these unauthenticatable um, mystery elections, there will be a perfect storm, and there could be something that becomes very destabilizing. We need to solve this problem. Bev Harris, I tell you, Pure Veritas uh, from blackboxvoting.org, founder uh, now. Uh, it is a, uh, a profit uh, think tank uh, for free speech. They can be more effective, so be sure and go to that site and support her work. No one on the left, no one on the right, no one internationally cannot say she is the highest respected for her integrity, whether it was on HBO or NPR or Vice or CNN or Fox News. Everyone has to admit this woman goes where the story is. She exposes Republicans. She exposes Democrats. She exposes it all. And you just heard her in deep research, fraction magic voting going on in key states where they can remotely at the Central Tabulation Center shave the votes, pre-program it, and then hide it Total proof these election machines are Pandora's box, absolutely foisted. The establishment wants us to be asleep, to not know this is happening. But just covering this today, I want to thank DrudgeReport.com for caring about our elections. It's top linked, middle column, red linked, how America's elections are hacked, missing link discovered, vote fraud expert. Uh, Bev Harris uh, uh, details it. It is now up there uh, on Drudge. Uh, Quite frankly, the article is important, the video is powerful, but I think this interview is even more uh, illuminating. I mean, this I, 21 years on air, I am having trouble actually talking at this point. This is so incredible. If people haven't seen the video, if they just tuned in to what Bev Harris was saying, I'm going to add a link to the article that's on Drudge, and I'm going to tweet right now that Real Alex Jones, if you guys can tweet, that you know, a top election expert is, is exposing smoking gun of election fraud uh, on air now. Uh, I mean, because uh, I agree with her that the elite are preparing everyone for Trump to lose, even though she's way behind, even though they're adding nine points, 12 points, 15, 20 points in the samples, even though every Democrat I know, I mean, folks, almost every Democrat I know now in the last two weeks says they're voting for Trump. It's happening all over the country. I can't believe it now.
I mean, I would get hissed at wearing a Trump shirt six months ago. Now people come over and say, you know what? She is a crook. I'm going for him. She robbed it from Bernie Sanders. And so I think there's a huge landslide for Trump. And I think she's right looking at the pre-narrative, how they're getting everybody ready for him to lose in these key states. I think those are the states we watch. So, so, mm -hmm. so, so Bev Harris, you've got the floor for five minutes. A lot of new people tuning in right now. Recap the incredible smoking gun. This isn't like you got the code to die bold and prove they could cheat and then went back and looked at some of the paper ballot evidence not matching. It's not like you caught, you know, the programmers admitting they were stealing it. You have absolute proof on how they're able to do it all over the country, built into it, built into it, so they can, you, you have discovered the built, crafted back door. Not some rat hole where they can, you know, maybe do something. You have, you have discovered the smoking gun. Yeah, and let me tell you who put it in there. Okay, when Benny Smith found this, uh, at first, you know, he said, well, you know, I said, well, maybe it's just in Memphis where you are. No, no, I got all my databases. It was in all my databases. And then he uh, pointed me to some programmer emails. And following those and some other documents I have, we were able to pinpoint the exact date they put it in there. Now, that date disturbed me very much. It was uh, in June 2001 uh, because I knew that who controlled the company back then was a person who had been convicted of com of 23 counts of computer fraud and had formerly worked for, I, you can't make this stuff up, formerly employed by Bud Crow, who was the head of the Watergate Plumbers Unit under Nixon. This, okay, I still have people going, well, it could be in there for, a, for an okay reason. It's just that it happens to be able to be used to control all the votes in the U.S. Okay, fine. And it was put in there by a convicted computer criminal wow. who was spent four years in jail. I wow. have his Department of Correction things, who used to work for one of the Watergate people. But if you, you can believe what you want if it makes you feel better. But I think it's pretty clear what's going on. Beyond sensational. Please continue. Well, Again, I want to come back to the fact that the solution is already available to us and doesn't even cost anything. These new machines are all taking pictures of the ballots. The ballots, they should put those on the web pronto. And if you simply, yes, technically you could alter an image, but what you do is you have a serial number on every image, and you also let people go and examine the paper ballots and, and match up those serial numbers and make sure they match if they feel like it. Game, set, match. You cannot tamper the election very easily at all if you release all the ballot images. Bev Harris, you have solved it. You have solved people it. Check the ballots. You've solved it with your team. Have a printer print off a copy. It's got a serial number. There's a digital copy of it. People can spot check it, and we all right. police our our republic. And guess what? Those things are already available. They're just not letting us at them. So that wow. tells us a great deal. They're already there, and at this point. Let's get rid of their excuses, which are turning into so much nonsense, and say, okay, we're done with that. We're done with that. Fraction magic. We are going to look at the ballot images. We're going to look at the ballots. Do what you need to do, Again, and we're going to look. If you just tuned in, Bev Harris, the top respected uh, bipartisan election fraud expert, broken more election fraud than every other election fraud expert in this country's 100-year history since we had modern, modern reporting on it to a certain extent. Undoubtedly, uh, total credibility, finding what I believe is her biggest breakthrough yet with this fraction magic uh this is actually the 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 rosetta stone of fraud and so i want to ask her what do we do to reverse this because you're saying clearly the fix is in for hillary one way or another she's getting in that's a i mean i never heard you in the 16 17 years we've been talking right. ever using language like that i mean this is amazing right. Right. Well, uh, one of the things to do if you've got the clout is to get temporary restraining orders to pre prohibit them from destroying the ballot images. Uh, why, why? It's a federal record. They're not even allowed to, but they're doing that. Um, they're turning off the feature. They're saying we need to turn off the feature so that they don't exist. So that's one thing that can be done right now. And whether or not that's done, go ask for the ballot images. Go in there with a USB stick the day after the election and say, I want all the ballot image images under my freedom of information, right? Put them on this USB stick. Thank you very much. And then if they obstruct or say they don't have them, document it. Videotape it. Document that they have destroyed the key audit record that would authenticate the count. Wow. Bev, in, in, in your decades fighting this, have you ever broken something this big? No, and I, I, I can't say that... 
you know, you keep giving me all these. Uh, these no, I know you don't want the credit, but, but you're the tip of the spear. Say, You've organized yeah. it. Well, all I'm saying yeah. is for everybody listening. I mean, this correct me if I'm wrong. This is the big enchilada. This is it is it is the big enchilada, and the, per, the there's a the man of tremendous courage in Memphis, Tennessee, named Benny Smith, who was the guy who who found this and unraveled this and basically showed me the key. He called me a year ago. We he is the amazing African American. He's the and amazing. I knew when he contacted me that he had the key. I was like, oh my goodness. And we have literally, where I've been putting this guy through his paces. I did not want to report something unless I was absolutely dead certain that it was true. Well, tell us and about. Let me tell you, it's, it's true. Tell us about this incredible American patriot on the other side. What a game changer. Final segment with Bev Harris. I'm almost going to just walk off and let somebody else host the next part of the show to be able to get this ready and get this out because, well, it's already out on Drudge. Folks, get it out on Twitter, Facebook. Right now, people are hungry for the truth. Bev Harris and her researchers and this great American have blown it wide open. Incredible, Bev. I've got a couple more questions for Bev Harris. We have two red links on DrudgeReport.com right now. Um, please, everybody, get the video that's linked in the article. Send it out to everybody you know. Go to DrudgeReport.com. It's the easiest place to find it. Get the article. How America's elections are hacked. Missing link discovered. Top vote fraud expert Bev Harris exposes electronic voting machines. But as she pointed out, I'm probably going to change the headline. It's not the machines. It's the central tabulation. So we would say vote fraud expert Bev Harris exposes how the election is currently being stolen. Or, I mean, you're the expert. What headline do we put on this, Bev? Uh, you're going to have to choose the headline. <laughs> I know, I just want to be totally accurate. A vote fraud e uh, expert, Bev Harris, exposes, uh, you know, uh, the big enchilada or, I mean. You know, it's, I, I just call it the magic key. I mean, it, it really literally is. You picture a janitor going down the hall with a master key jingling at his side. He can open any door with it. There you go. You know, we've basically got. So you have found the mother load of election fraud. Yeah, it, it tells you how to do everything. And, you know, it's it, you really can uh, can see it depicted, and it's just... And I know you want to give this fellow credit, and we are in a moment. I want to get him on yeah. and you back on. Please, please, please. I know I've been wanting you on for months. You've been quietly working on this. Briefly, though, George Soros, 16 states, his company, he's connected to others. He's been caught in a lot of stuff. What do you make of that? Yeah, um, I have seen some indicators. Now, there's a company called Dominion. There has been some uh, mistakes where people thought that there, the Smartmatic was being used. No, Smartmatic hasn't been used here. It's been used in Latin America and a bunch of other places. But he's connected, I think, it's kind of through a couple of hoops, but with a company called Dominion. And Dominion is one of the ones that bought the premier Diebold stuff, and they have now admitted that they fractionalized the count. Whoa! Mm-hmm. So a, a Soros-connected group? Uh, again, uh, it's, you know, it's sort of connected through a couple of arm's lengths. But it is, it, it's enough so that I, I, I wouldn't call, I, I think there is some connection. It's just, um, it's like one of his guys' guys. Sure, well, that's it. what he does with Media Matters and everything. That's oh, how yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and that's kind of similar, like Mitt Romney kind of got involved with Hard Inner Civic, um, but it was through his son's, uh, you know, LLC. And Senator and Hagel. Do it directly. Senator Hagel and all his hanky-panky. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, there's always going to be a couple of, of buffers uh, in between. But, but Soros Connected Group, um, it looks like maybe admitting to be involved in, in the whole fraction deal. Wow. Oh, they are. They have. Yeah, they. They. One of their top guys said that they did it. There's a um, person. There's a group called Defend the Vote in Illinois, and uh, the woman involved with that, Sharon Maroney, uh, actually confronted Dominion and said, and they admitted that they do fractionalize the count. And she asked them why, and they said, for marketing purposes. Wow, they hide it in plain view. <laughs> Bev, I know you I probably got it. They're selling, but I can guess. <laughs> I know you probably got to go, but but uh, how do we support BlackBoxVoting.org? Oh, you know, we, I still, I really do need it. I have not asked for donations in four years uh, because I've just, and, and this last year, I just basically, you know, what I, my we method of doing things I already have is produce, prove, show people stuff, and then it will come to me. And I, I, I do definitely need it, you know, because, man, I am on and tear. I've got, I've got another project right on the You're getting $35 from me a month right now to defend my vote.
You are awesome. You're defending my children. You're amazing. Bev Harris, blackboxvoting.org. Now, if you've got to go, it's fine. If you can stay five minutes for the next hour to talk about the gentleman that discovered this. Oh, heck yeah. To talk about Benny Smith, absolutely. Okay, we're going to go to break in about 50 seconds. Uh, any other quick points before we go to break? Uh, no, let's just go to break and then come back and talk about Benny Smith. All right. Again, Bev Harris, blackboxvoting.org, drudgereport.com, fighting for your right to vote. It, top link. Uh, get those out to everybody. We're tweeting it at Real Alex Jones. We're going to post these videos. Which, which has a powerful headline, but I mean, I mean, on, on YouTube, it needs to be named, you know, the mother load of election fraud discovered, Hillary plans to steal it. I mean, we, we need to get all these videos out. This is incredible. Stay with us. We don't have a siren like DrudgeReport.com does, but I noticed Rob Dew on a news alert I did Saturday put a siren on it. We got to grab that news siren he got and put it behind us today. Uh, it's a serious form of flattery is uh, imitation. And point out, we are on in fuego. We had 10 times the traffic we've ever had about six months ago for a couple days. We have tripled that record, ladies and gentlemen, with the traffic we have. Five million people basically on the site at any one time. It's all Bev Harris. Today was a big day. A lot of folks were on the site, a million and a half or so at one time. It went completely insane, over five million. The info wars may go down. Uh, PrisonPlanet.com. I knew Bev had something big going. She used to come on whenever I wanted her to come on. She hasn't come on in probably a year. She's been working on this six months, and she says she's going to be traveling because she's on the road. This lady's incredible. And uh, but it's exciting to me to know people are upset, they're concerned, and this has gone total viral. And I feel like I'm not even doing it justice how bombshell it is. And we got four minutes uh, left, or three and a half minutes, uh, Bev. Other key points you want to make to viewers and listeners and, and, and talk about the man in Tennessee that discovered this. Yeah, well, this is the key of it. You know, we, all of us, it is up to us. And each of us has different skill sets that can do miraculous things. Benny, now, the guy I told you about, this computer fraud guy back in the day who actually put this in there, he had three kinds of expertise. He had expertise in database programming, expertise in accounting and finance programming, and expertise in political demographics. Along comes Benny Smith, and for the first time looking at the system, somebody with the same portfolio of skills. He is a database programmer. He works in finance, and he understands programming for finance, because this was related to that. And he does political demographics. He saw what was needed immediately because he had that set of skills. And I'm telling you that to say, number one, I, I just think this is a, a tremendous patriot, a tremendous guy. But also because very, we each of us have different kinds of skills. And stepping up to the plate doesn't mean you need to go become a computer programmer. If you're good at public speaking, you go speak. If you're a good writer, you write. You know, whatever it is, if you're good at organizing people, you organize. But you step up, stand up. And do something. Well, Benny Smith, we salute you. I mean, if I had something other than water here and uh, lemon juice, I would, I would, I would toast you. But that's not good luck. But uh, Benny Smith, we salute you. You're incredible, yeah. Bev. I know you never like it, but let me tell you something. Uh, there, I mean, I interviewed the other vote fraud experts that were before you, the Collier brothers and others, and they died, and their daughter, she's great, and, and and other folks. I'm just saying, you are so dynamic. You've done with your crew and, and the folks 10 times what anybody else ever did. So that's, that's why I single you out because you're amazing and you're such a treasure. Well, thank you so much. I, I, it, it does mean a lot. Um, and mostly I do it myself. I just do it because it's important, you know. And I think, but there's a lot of people that are doing things. And I, there's a guy that you should have on that if you haven't yet, his name is John Brakey out of Arizona. This man is a one-man dynamo. He came out. I've known him for 10 years. Man, you tell us who to have on. This year. You tell us who to have on. It's on. You can program the oh, info. you got it. Oh, you got it. I, I mean, he is, um, he, he's going to blow your mind, too. And, I mean, this is what I see, and this is what's exciting is people. Regular people are, onto are stepping it. up, and they are making a huge difference. That's how we take it back. Wow, blackboxvoting.org. Yeah, you've been on the show 16, 17 years and never asked for donations. You try to sell a book or whatever to fund yourself. She is asking for donations. She needs to get out there, cover the election fraud this year, now ongoing. You heard her earlier, and she's been a Democrat, folks. She's just being honest. Hillary is stealing it. The evidence is overwhelming. It's very, very sad. Trump is right. I mean, I went to the doctor's office this morning for a checkup. The nurse was telling me everybody, including her sister, I was on the phone with her sister, that they're all having it flipped to Hillary. Uh, we're out of time, but what is this flipping? That, that's the old-fashioned. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, in Texas, your Texas toast, I say. Uh, it can be happening at the voting machine also in, te- in Texas. It can happen both places in Texas, and there does seem to be flipping and different things happening there. Um, so maybe they just really, really want to take Texas, and they're just you know pulling out all the stops. Um, but again, it comes back to, in the long run, we need paper ballots. We need to be We do, and, and, and you're exposing it. So Thank you. Images. Ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of the hour, Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com is our guest. He's the head of the Von Mies Institute, former head of Ron Paul's uh, chief of staff. A great political mind, a true classical liberal slash libertarian is what I'm calling. And I read the stuff at Mies.org. I mean, it's so on target about how ideas are capital and wealth and how, uh, you know, demanding excellence is what right, rises up humanity and, and true competition. And you look at the liberals. Banning Halloween, sending in police to harass people, launching all these wars, trying to control language. It's crazy. Now, we've had the biggest event in InfoWars history. InfoWars has been around uh, 19 years. I've been on air 21 years. And we had, uh, uh, about six months ago, some dates where we had 10 times our previous records of, of traffic on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, this was Bev Harris. We were having high traffic today. We got... Five times the traffic we've ever had. Now, that, now that's five times, ten times the traffic. We just had five times that. It's so exponential that there's over five million people at any one second on Infowars.com. It is, there's nothing else like it except for DrudgeReport.com. And, of course, that's because DrudgeReport.com has us two red links dead center on Drudge right now. Because Drudge, obviously, was listening when we had Bev Harris on. And Bev Harris is for months wouldn't come on. She said, I've got the biggest thing ever. She came on. She gave it to us first, just like Veritas does. And I'm just blessed. I'm humbled because they know we won't censor them. It can come out. This thing is going so viral. So I want to get into this with Rockwell, uh, who is a patriot uh, slash politico. So he'll know what to do. We can all put this together and then get into other issues in a few minutes. But people are tuned in massively right now. I mean, just millions of extra people tuned in because people are having their votes flipped. Weird stuff's happening. The Democrats are saying we're going to win Utah. We're going to win Texas. Even though polls show that Trump's going to win, uh, they've been adding uh, 9, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 points into polls, oversampled Democrats. They're doing corrupt things out in the open we've never seen. Now, is it that we know more or they're just more corrupt? I think it's both. But what we've discovered is the giant enchilada, the mother load of programs being used nationwide to shave votes we have the algorithm, we have everything, and we have them running at the voting places when Bev Harris shows up with the computers out the back. We have the insiders, we have the whistleblowers, we have the, we have the engineers. It's called Fractal Magic Digital Version. Now, that's the name of the video they released this morning. She gave it to us as exclusive. It's powerful. What, 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 what viral was how America's elections are hacked as Missing Link discovered. Now, we're going to put out more videos and more articles with the interview we just did with her last hour. And what we're seeing is massive key to systematic election fraud discovered. And, and then I brought up Soros. She goes, yes, the company he's connected to through his operatives is the one that's already admitted to using this program. That's not even in their video. It's like, oh, my God. And then she named where they caught him. I mean, this is so biblical right now, okay? And people know, I don't get excited unless, I'm, I mean, I've never been this blown away except maybe when Matt Drudge visited or, I don't know. I mean, this is crazy. And, and, and all this is coming out on Hillary. She's in full panic mode. I want to get a true omnibudsman of libertarian movement, not the current head of it, who's basically, Trump took over the Republican Party, the globalists took over the, Demo the, the uh, Libertarian Party, in my view. I'm not trying to bash the Libertarians, but if that's Libertarian, that warmonger vice president he's got, I'm an Easter bunny. But the point is, is Trump's the populist, he's the nationalist, he's got him scared. This is such a key time for America, and even if they steal it, folks. And Bev Harris said Trump is really going to win the evidence, but, but, but Hillary is going to steal it. She's a big Democrat, folks. And she said, you heard her on air, she basically broke with all of them. This was so bad. She's the one that exposed Bush. She's got the ultimate credibility. Lou Rockwell, I am breathless here, my friend. I'm, I'm glad you're here because... I, I mean, this is just like, I mean, it's wonderful we're exposing it. So, so it's just like I just had another child, but it's also like somebody in the family died. As we learned, it's worse than we thought. I mean, this is incredible.
Well, Alex, uh, Bev Harris is a, is a heroine, just like you're a hero. And uh, it's great to have this material out there. Um, I don't know how new this is in American history. After all, LBJ stole a Senate seat and uh, even killed somebody in the process. Mayor Daley in Chicago uh, stole the 1960 election for JFK. I mean, there are many instances in American history of vote stealing, but probably this is thanks to the money of, and the evil of George Soros. This is uh, more systematic, more sophisticated. Uh, but I think you're exactly right. If Trump, quote unquote, loses and how right he is to say he's not going to concede until he sees how crooked the thing is, um, you know, this is this is uh, this is trouble for the regime. It's trouble for the power elite. It's trouble for the globalists uh, because L the, ver the majority of Americans are going to see it stolen. Uh, this could bring about a revolution. So uh, who knows? Who knows whether they will agree, actually sir. carry out the theft if he gets a big enough vote, which I think he's going to get. I think this is going to be a landslide for Trump if it's honest. Yes, sir. I, well, I, I, please dishonest. continue uh, with your great points. She, because you didn't hear her. Let me just be clear. She said, and she's not a hype driven person, as you know. She's a true heroine. She said this dwarfs anything she's ever done. It's the key to everything, like the janitor's key. They're using it everywhere. They When, when she says it, on video, they crap their pants and start running. We have discovered, like you said, the systematic ring of Mordor, basically. We have discovered the Dark Lord's ring. They've had lots of other little corruptions and stealing and murders and ballot stuffing and dead people voting. This is the, this is it. I mean, this is the Excalibur of evil when it comes to stealing elections. And the fact that she saved this you know, until the October surprise or November surprise, this is going to be a game changer, I think. Because as you said, if they steal it, it only blows up in their face harder. Please continue. Well, I also think that there's some very interesting sort of deep state stuff going on. I think that there are people within the deep state who, for whatever reason, don't have decided they don't want Hillary. Um, my guess is the reason is because even these people don't want a, nu don't want a nuclear war with that's Russia. It. So I think that's, I think even within the deep state, I've been state, told by top there generals. That, yeah, there are factions that are pro-Trump. Um, you're Only dead for on. for that reason, not because they like him otherwise. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. I'm just, I'm just, it's just so ex absolutely current generals, former generals. Uh, Flynn exposed how the government's running Al Qaeda and running ISIS. He's a total That's patriot. Right. I mean, uh, the good men and women are standing up. This is an epic battle. Please, can, how would you describe as a historian as well, uh, Lou Rockwell, LouRockwell.com? How would you describe this moment in history, this next seven days? Well, I think we know there's never been an election like this. Uh, I must say, there's never been an election this much fun either. Yes, uh, it's, it's tremendous fun that helps everybody focus on it. It's important that everybody focus on exactly what's happening. We can't count out uh, the Hillary forces for trying something else. Uh, but I think the, the uh, James Comey statement indicates there's important uh, opposition to her, her, to her even within the regime. So this is hot. Um, I, my guess is Trump is gonna win. But again, if they steal it from him, they don't win. We the people win because there's gonna be an uprising uh, and I don't mean a violent uprising, but a, uh, a popular uprising, a mental uprising, an uprising of ideas, uh, thanks to people like you, Alex. And um, I think this is, this is a great time for America. Um, I just, I think it's gonna be thrilling, but we have to watch. We know all the instances of vote flipping in Texas and all the corruption in other states. George Soros is also behind all the immigration. Uh, this is another thing that's going for Hillary. They're wanting to register all the illegals and have them vote the straight Democratic ticket. To what extent they get away with that, I don't know. That's, that's their intention. Uh, have there been enough illegals brought in so that they win just on those grounds? We, we can certainly hope not. But this is definitely a historic moment. Uh, it's a great moment. It's a fun moment. And uh, we just have to all work harder, fight harder, expose these creeps like you do every day. And uh, that's the most powerful weapon we can have. We have to take away their legitimacy. It's why they were so worried when Trump said he would not concede the election, because they're, they're a minority. The people who rule us are a minority. We, the people, are the majority. They have to have our consent. To the extent that they lose our consent, they crumble like uh, the statue of Ozymandias in the desert. So this is, this is what's at stake. Uh, I think they've lost already legitimacy among a huge number of Americans. Uh, if they steal this election, uh, everything is up for grabs. And I don't think that I don't think Hillary can actually win, as you pointed out, in the long term, even if she's 
brought into the White House on a stretcher, however, however they'll have to do it, um, she doesn't win. Either Trump wins the election or he wins the battle for hearts and minds uh, as, soon as, she's, as soon as she's inaugurated. And Lou Rockwell, you hit the heart of everything. They make politics boring and dry and ugly to make everybody tune out of it, to make us hopeless. Trump, by being the, the, the bull in a China cabinet, who at least had the instinct for nationalism and not to have World War III, uh, being pilloried, being demonized, drew out the rigging, showed how the system's unified, and now it's turned politics into something interesting again because now it's real, like the muckraking, and now people who were never involved are coming in, and it's scaring the daylights out of the elite. Alex is exactly right. That's, in fact, the neocons have always emphasized that uh, they don't quite put it in these terms. Of that, again, that politics should be boring. The discussion of ideas should be boring. They're afraid of rousing the people. You know, they're like a bunch of fleas on a big dog, and they feel that they're in control, but they're always worried they're going to be scratched off. Maybe this year they're going to be scratched off. And uh, very exciting. It's fun. Uh, I think also another great thing that's happened is the vast majority of Americans now realize that you can't trust the mainstream media. They're just uh, shills for the bad guys. So that's been it. I think they're, we're, we're seeing their ratings decline. We're seeing this belief in them decline. Uh, alternative media like you, Alex, are zooming upwards. It's a great thing. It's a great thing we're it's, seeing. It's, it's an incredible it thing. It real hope for the future, I must say. It does. Real hope for the future because it's always darkest before the dawn. Lou Rockwell, LouRockwell.com is our guest. We'll talk more about this. When we come back and, 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 and you know, get into his brain about what he sees coming. But regardless of what he's saying, any way you look at this historical, an amazing renaissance is here if we just take it and if they don't start World War III. That's the problem. Uh, this is just a six-minute segment, 18-minute segment coming up with Lou Rockwell. We've got Rob Dew who's going to be hosting the fourth hour because we're sending um, David Knight up to cover the Danny Williams. Uh, that's the reported illegitimate son of Bill Clinton press conference at the National Press Club. I've been accused by the Clinton-controlled media of running Danny Williams, but I didn't know he was having a press conference tomorrow. <laughs> I just learned about it. You know, Lou Rockwell, that's the thing here. The controlled left, the controlled right, they think we're all command and control because the emails show how command and control they are with Hillary and a few aides running the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, telling CNN, uh, MSNBC, having their articles and stories approved? I'm a guy with 50-something crew members, but only like 30 of them are in media. I can't sit there and manage them. I've got to make sure they're just good people I can trust. I mean, I manage them some. Can you imagine the job of these control freaks trying to run the government, the media, while stealing billions? Well, it shows you why the government's as effective as it is. You know, it, it looks like to get something done in the Hillary campaign, they had to go through like 11 levels of approval with all these various people having their own views. It's just no wonder it's no wonder it takes them so long to respond, for example, whereas Trump just says it. Uh, uh, so it's it's uh, it's it's a fun. It's a, these emails are, all, of course, they've been tr just hugely successful. And I can't wait for the next ones to come out that Assange just said, we'll put Hillary in jail. Um, but already we've learned so much and we've learned how they operate, how much they hate the Catholic Church, how much they want to bring immigrants in and make uh, an, uh, Americans a minority in their own country. All the rest of the horrible plans that they have. How they think black people uh, are dumb, how they think poor people are dumb. Just a really hateful group of people. They're hate-filled, they're arrogant elitists. They hate the guts of the regular Americans. By the way, you always we, said that. That's what you always say. They hate common people. They hate workers. They don't yeah. want to make you rich. And you, I guess you were in Washington, you knew, because everything in WikiLeaks yeah. sounds like the refrain of what... Lou Rockwell's been warning about for 40 years. Well, this is the way these people are. And if you visit Washington, uh, where they even walk arrogantly, I mean, every, the arrogance is, you, well, a regular person can't believe the arrogance of dealing with anybody, not only in the government, but all the various agencies and uh, companies that, uh, go, that hover around the government uh, like flies around a garbage Why can. is arrogance the ether in which they swim? Well, I think because they're evil. And because, of course, first of all, they, and this is true of everybody in the Washington area, they believe themselves to be the most important people on earth, the most powerful, the most significant, the smartest. Exceptional. And they have the right to live, uh, you know, high on the hog off the, off the rest of us. That's and that's what Putin was saying. Elite. Stop thinking you're better than everybody. And he wasn't talking about America. He was talking about our elite. 
That's right, and it's the whole, you know, American exceptionalism that uh, God has blessed America in a special way, uh, that we're, uh, I must say, the pilgrims had this view that we're the new Zion, and uh, that God is directing, you know, this is just another country. It's been a very successful country in many ways because of our free markets and limited government. Those are both, of course, And that's what made us window. great, not having the biggest government. That's, of course, <laughs> having the biggest government. By the way, the U.S. government is the biggest government in the history of the world by many magnitudes. And uh, we desperately need to drastically cut taxes, cut regulations. Um, Let's talk about that. Well, I mean, as a Von Mies Institute head, uh, what do you think of Trump's plan overall? Well, I think, uh, I think it's, it's like Trump himself, it's, it's mixed. So his basic economic plan to drastically cut taxes, cut regulations, make it better for business people in this country, the lower is, is, is all great stuff. Um, I think it's very good to get rid of these trade deals, which are mis misnamed as free trade. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of tariffs. Uh, but, but he is uh, off on keeping 0% interest rates, right? Yes, and of course he's also the only one to criticize the Fed, except Ron Paul. So it's quite a wonderful thing. He's, he's shown up the Fed. He's talked about that this is a bubble economy. Uh, we've got economic troubles ahead, of course, because of all the... So what, is he right about 90% of the time Hillary's wrong 100%? I mean, that's a big difference. Well, Hillary's... <laughs> Hillary is wrong and evil 100% of the time in every single way. He's right much of the time. Uh, but just the fact that he won't start World War III, even during the height of the Cold War, uh, both powers were, both America and the Soviet Union, were careful never to risk a nuclear war. Neither one of them actually wanted it. I agree. They, experts say we're at the highest threat ever. Why would our I current elite question. want to do that? Well, I think the neocons are, have got a crazy gene. I think if we can sort of think of the, 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 this is a very simplistic model, but think of the Rockefeller wing and the neocon wing. The Rockefellers, as bad as they are, and I'm using that again as a, as a cover word for a, a very a variegated and large group, uh, they, they don't actually want the end of the world. I don't think that even the neocons want the end of the world, but they believe that their power is so great that they can threaten the only two countries that still have any significant independence and are our major powers, that is Russia and China, and bring them to heel. They can turn Russia and China into, uh, in effect, colonies of the U.S. Those countries are not going to allow that to happen. That's right. Lou Rockwell, Trusting stay there. The way they are. we got to go to break. We'll come back and examine that more straight ahead. Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com and Alex Jones. And now they caught a convicted computer crime mastermind running the program nationally to add a program onto the software that your counties buy that allows them at the central system to pre-program how the votes are going to come out. I mean, this is insane. You have Democrats on video, the highest level national heads of these operations, saying nobody's going to stop us. We're stealing everything. We're having people vote 10 times. You have the head of New York Board of Elections, who's a Democrat, saying, I don't like it, but Democrats are going around stealing everything. At least he, and they say, well, you got to speak out. He goes, oh, I can't do that. He looks all freaked out. So you got people that aren't evil but are afraid. You got people that are evil that are screwing everybody. Then you got people out there that aren't informed who are just told this is all a conspiracy theory. We're going back to Lou Rockwell here in a moment. I'm sure of it now. I can feel it in my gut. I can see it. It's already happened. This is the biggest story we're ever covered. I've been trying to get Beth Harris on for six months. She wouldn't come on working on this. She premiered it here today. I had no idea. I thought she would just have the regular thing about some code or caught some fraud here or there. She has the national code, how they're doing it, people flipping out and running when she goes to the voting places. It's happening all over the country. Now, I didn't plug anything last hour. And I skipped breaks. And I won't be able to fund this operation if I do it. I got Bev Harris on saying support her. Support Veritas. Absolutely. We're on this fight together. We need your support. Because I get so heated, so focused, so intense that I don't even sit here and talk about our sponsors, anything. And we got Lou Rockwell sitting here waiting for me to go to him. So here's the bottom line. We go get the very best water filtration systems. Nobody should be drinking tap water. It's full of all sorts of runoff and crap. We have the very best systems, the lowest prices. 30% off around a special right now. InfoWars. Store.com is the umbrella site. The ProPure G2 King, their biggest unit, sits on your tabletop, does over 10,000 gallons, cuts all the garbage out, five-star ratings. Check it out for our 4.9 star ratings on third-party sites. Nobody's got even close. Continuing because of the price and the quality. I'm a capitalist. I go to the very lowest price, folks. I sell storable foods 
from my Patriot, private label, the very same food off the same assembly line in Utah. And I have it in my contract that I can sell it 10% under whatever their lowest special is because I private label at the same factory. That's how they get around their distributors coming after them, their other distributors. I'm such a capitalist. I go, I don't, I don't want 40% profit. I want, I want 10%. And so I do stuff like this, 30 to 40% off right now. And that's why we're dominating. And you get the storable food you need, InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. You want to get it from my Patriot? We drop ship it every day from Utah. Their, their entire catalog's right next to it, and InfoWarsStore.com. By the way, it's a great deal when you get that food from us from them as well. And we're usually just 10% under them. But I can contractually, a few times a year, I've kind of kind of stretched that a bit, but they've let me. So that's what I do. 30 to 40% off. It's ending Wednesday. It's got to end. This ends today. 25% off our amazing nootropic brain force. Infowarslife.com is, again, the supplement site. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Call toll-free. We can answer all your questions. Take orders 24 hours a day. Or just, again, answer your questions. 888-253-3139. And listen, I don't want to be the tip of the spear. We are the tip of the spear. We've gotten folks out of their trance, all the great guests, the full spectrum of analysis, Drudge working, helping us, you know, just patriots all over the world. We need your prayers, your support, but just understand this. I want to thank you for what you've done and believing in us. We've believed in you and the world's changing. So whether it's a, I was going to say Hillary for president, but that's sure it's collectors. It's gone now. We no longer have it. Um, we have the Trump is my president red shirt. We're on election day to show our true numbers or just wear a red shirt. We have so many other great items. Check them out. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Also, find the entire great longevity line of supplements, over 400 great products, at Infowarsteam.com. Sign up there at a percentage. I think it's like 8% or something goes to support the broadcast. And you can get the lowest deals at Infowarsteam.com. When you sign up as a distributor or for auto ship, get free shipping. Infowarsteam.com. Wow, such a time to be alive, so much happening. New Podesta emails out, more of him saying, we've got to have lawyers go through these emails and cut out all the illegal stuff before we give it to Congress. We have o Obama talking to Hillary, uh, and, and you know they're saying we've got to cover up these pen names, these pseudonyms, these uh, gnome diplomas. Uh, that's all open and shut prison time. Uh, getting back into World War III in a moment, and why all the experts agree it's the greatest danger now, and you t tend to keep going back there, so do I, so I want to hear your historical view on that. Just on the WikiLeaks and this load of evil and more and more coming out, and Assange saying something's coming soon that she'll have to pardon herself uh, it, you know, is her only hope. I mean, th this is so epic, I'm pinching myself. I hope that Trump gives gives Assange the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Yes, because this guy is a hero. He's a hero to the whole world, not just to to us. He really is. What an extraordinary thing he's done, telling us the truth about the insiders, what they're actually doing, all the stuff we're never supposed to know. Uh, Alex, I just wanted to quickly mention one particular example of election theft that I think will interest your 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 viewers, your magnificently large number of viewers. In 1974, Ron Paul won a special election to Congress, which nobody expected. So 1976, they stole his first election from him. And it was the old-fashioned way, but you had pe dead people voting. Uh, you had uh, people registered at Gulf gas stations, public libraries. My favorite was a guy registered at the uh, Houston Astrodome. So they, <laughs> they, they stole the election. <laughs> Tip O'Neill approved it and was laughing about it uh, when there was an appeal made to the House of Representatives. But Ron Paul made sure it didn't happen the next time because he mobilized all his troops. Uh, so it is possible to undo this stuff. Everybody has to be so vigilant. Your idea about wearing a red shirt to the polls is great. They won't, you know, they tend not to let you wear the name of a candidate uh, in the polling place. But a red shirt, they can't keep you from doing that. And everybody has to be really their own uh, voter um, expert, their own voter watchdog. If you see anything funny, There'll be numbers to call to uh, report it. You have to report it. You have to protest it. You have to just not be a sheep, one of the sheep that they want you to be. But I think really Americans have awakened. And, and I also think in this, we have to credit Ron Paul for this. This is the man who's done it. So many Americans now understand that these wars are just uh, fraudulent, phony, destructive, monstrous, evil, and now threaten to end the world, threaten to end human life on Earth. 
Can anybody like Hillary Clinton, you know, they talk about Trump not being trusted with the nuclear codes. I mean, Hillary Clinton is, is evil and maybe she's got a crazy gene too as well. Certainly she's subjected to the people who do have crazy genes. She can't be allowed anywhere near. And I think as you pointed out, people in the Pentagon feel this. Obviously people in the FBI feel it. It's quite a wonderful thing to see these factions breaking out. It's a great step for liberty. Really, this is an exciting time to be alive, and we all need to throw in, watch your show, Alex. We all need to be activists. Uh, we all need to read the right things, watch the right things. It's really a tremendous time to be alive. We, we, we have the opportunity to change this country. And I must say, I've always thought that it would happen quickly and unexpectedly. That's exactly what's happened. Trump was not supposed to win. It's all, he's, he's talking about many great issues. All the immigration that uh, bringing in specifically, you know, anti-Christian uh, refugees. Not every there are plenty of the legal immigrants who are a problem too. It's too much immigration. Certainly, too much illegal immigration. Well, too much free so, stuff, and that draws the wrong type of people. And so, let me ask you this question: You're as far more, far better welfare than any American can ever get. By the way, given to these Syrians, they live high on the hog at the expense of the rest of us. And as that poor woman who was beaten up, the homeless woman beaten up. Uh, in Hollywood the other day for trying to protect Trump's uh, star from being further brutalized. Um, she said, isn't it funny that we have 20 million illegals in this country and yet Americans are sleeping in the street? Well, it's true. So uh, maybe something's going to be done about it. This is our chance. How th what a thrilling time to be alive. This is the kind of thing you're going to tell your grandchildren about, your great-grandchildren if you're lucky to live that long. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for the patriotic Americans. I totally agree. Alex, but, but, thank you for leading. Thanks for leading the fight. Oh, are, listen, are you kidding, Lou? I only talk about how successful the broadcast is, is it, it, so that people understand liberty's popular. I know I'm like a surfer on a big wave in Hawaii. I'm not the wave. Like Ron Paul always said, I'm just a focal point, a much greater scholar and patriot than I am. And, and I respect you, you know, with a greater intellect than I have. I'm just somebody, when Bev Harris was on earlier, I said, you know, when you're mentioning all this and showing documentation, I feel like I can't breathe. I've been robbed. I'm pissed off. And she said, you know, it's funny, Alex. She said, I've never really shared it, but that's how I feel when I discover this is that I can't help it. I want to fight them. I want to, you know, make it better. I want to resist it. And I think that's what separates you and I and others and the majority of people from the controllers. They really are out to get people. They really are nasty folks like you've always seen. But getting back to history, because you keep going to this and you're absolutely right. The reason all the major historians, when I say all, I mean, it's all over the news, and, and analysts say the world's in the greatest danger ever, is we see trends in the world and elites that finally get backed into a corner historically, they always start a war. That's why you keep warning. And we've now reached a point where they're all backed into a corner, they're trying to start wars, they're saying they want a war, but the generals even go to Congress and say, that'll require going to war with Russia and Syria. That'll require going to war with Russia and Europe if we send in troops into Ukraine, when clearly Soros started it. So the reason we keep going back to nukes is we're winning. You're right. We're not going to lose now. Culturally, that wavelength has been ignited. But the problem is, you're right. They're going to go the Hitler route when he thinks he's losing in, in Europe and go into Russia, or they're going to go the you know Napoleon route. They seem to always double down. So how do we stop them? Well, I think, and then this is not just those guys. FDR did it in World War II. Wilson did it in World War I. Lincoln did it in the Civil War. This is this is not exactly an unusual thing. But I think the way we stop it is knowledge and uh, people being dedicated to changing things. So I think more and more people know more. They're more and more skeptical of the regime. They don't believe the elites. They don't believe the media. This is a great development. It's you know we see it even in the polls. We certainly see it in the people we know, people we talk to. You certainly know it. I know it. More and more people are understanding they're being ripped off. And it's so important to understand proper economics, real history, uh, political philosophy. All these things are important. But it's also very important for regular people to understand we are being ripped off. They're stealing from us. They're parasites living off of us. We have to get rid of them. We have to get rid of the parasites. We have to uh, be free. We have to, in the great American tradition, we have to be free men and women, be responsible for ourselves, live our own lives, have freedom to, uh, to work and to profit, to, uh, help, to profit and to um, uh, help other people by producing products and ideas that they would like to consume. 
This is the many great people in this country, many great business people, many great activists. We have not lost, and really, I think, for the first time in my lifetime, I see us winning. We really are moving forward in just the most sure. tremendous and exciting fashion. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's very thrilling, and we have to keep it going. I agree, so Lou, two points, two points. You know, as, as constitutionalist, as free marketers, as, as I mean, I would call myself an Austrian uh, you know, uh, economics follower because it makes total sense. I read it. It's what I see in the real world. It's not all this, you know, fantasy, fake academic stuff. It's, it's real history. It's, 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 it's really? Veritas. And it talks about we're not into consumer goods because we worship them. It's the true market of ideas that then allows human expression and true diversity. If you can speak to that briefly, and then you also are getting into the fact that you, you always thought it would come suddenly, and I agree. I now am sure we are in the beginning phase of a total revolution against tyranny. It's explosive. It's powerful. It's seismic. Nothing has ever been seen like this before. And uh, so, so scrap yourselves in. Can you speak to those two points? Well, I think, first of all, if, if you visit Washington, and it's, it's uh, I must say I don't like visiting Washington, but one of the great things about being there as you can see, the suburbs around Washington are the richest places in this country. Mansions, limos, fancy stores and restaurants. Nothing wrong with that stuff if it's produced through the market. This is all produced by theft, by parasitism. So these people are, and at the meantime, they're living like kings and they're telling us, don't be interested in consumer goods, don't be materialistic. We know there's nothing wrong with wanting a better life for yourself and for your family to have um, better resources to support your church, uh, important charities. That's what produces wealth uh, for everybody. Well, of course, this is, this is, of course, this is civilization. Civilization is brought about by private property and by free markets. And to the extent we fight for those principles, we're fighting for civilization. Also, we're fighting for civilization if we're opposing Hillary. She threatens human civilization. She threatens not just human flourishing, but which we always have to be concerned about. She threatens the very future of the human Let's race. Let's get into that, because How exactly. Can before her? Why, I mean, why are they like a moth of flame going towards war when you can't do it now with nuclear weapons? Well, she's, a, she's unbelievably arrogant, and she probably would not start out, although a lot of these people, uh, I remember back to Herman Kahn's awful book called Thinking the Unthinkable, published in the 60s when he, one of the original neocons, when he advocated uh, using first the first use, the regular first use of nuclear weapons by the U.S. to gain world control. Bertrand Russell did so, it as a liberal way to end war. Well, that's, so this is, that would end war, would end everything else, too. So we, you know, these these bombs are capable of, uh, you know, watch some of the great uh, anti-war movies, Dr. Strangelove, Seven Days in May. Um, oh, by the uh, way, they created the doomsday weapons. The Russians, we have them, too. They're classified. Uh, the, the Satan 2 is what the West calls it. They now have hundreds of ICBMs that can hit us in about five minutes that have 14, 40 megaton warheads that would destroy Texas or France. One missile. No, it's true. It's, it's horrific. These things are, of course, evil. Uh, I would say immoral because they're definitely targeted at civilians, even if within the code of war. You can't go after civilians deliberately. Of course, the U.S. has always done that on a massive scale. Uh, so many other countries, of course, have as well. So it's, Notice it's, how the Pentagon calls it Satan II when Russia makes it. I happen to know they've partially declassified that we even had these in the 90s. The, the U.S. has stuff with, 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 with 18, 24 warheads, some of them dummies, that are 60, 70, 100 megaton, even worse. That's much bigger than the, uh, the, the bombs that destroyed uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki much bigger, Hunters. and these were called MIRVED, Merved weapons, uh, multiple independent reentry vehicles. Yes, they, this is the, the typical missile in the U.S.'s arsenal, and it's also the, the, in the submarine arsenals, also some of the bombs that are dropped, the missiles that are dropped by the B-52s and other, uh, the, the B-1, the B-2 bombers. Uh, these things are horrific. We got this close during the Cuban Missile Crisis, Thank goodness JFK pulled back the missiles from the border of Russia and Turkey, which were secret. Khrushchev pulled back the missiles from Cuba. We avoided the end of the world at that point. I was about we to say when I was a kid. The end of the world right now. If she's elected, it's a, you know, I hope everybody's got a, a, a bunker in their backyard and has got plenty of food and water in there because uh, it's going to be horrific. Sure. Well, Lou, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not defending the, obviously the evil Soviet Union, but we became corrupt in the name of fighting it. But I remember one of my dad's uncles. And of course, this was declassified later. 
He said, hell, Cuban Missile Crisis, they, because my uncle was involved in it, they had tactical and medium-range missiles in Turkey, only like 500 miles from Russia, aimed at Russia, uh, and that's why Russia went into Cuba, but none of that was ever right. on our news. No, and it was the Jupiter missile, the most powerful missile the U.S. had at that point. They were very close for a first strike. This is what this is what both sides or any side would fear in this kind of weapons configuration: a first strike, well, a first strike that is so damage so damaging that it uh, makes the ability to retaliate impossible. So this is what the Russians fear. This is why they fear U.S. troops and missiles being brought up right to the borders of Russia. Uh, I remember seeing, a, and I published it on my site once, a great meme that showed the, the uh, map of the Soviet Union with all the U.S. bases all around it, and the caption was, how dare they put their country in the middle of our military bases? Yeah, let's pull that up the and we Google. Surrounds them. How dare There's Russia put its country in the middle of our military bases? Let's Google that and click images. I've seen that image. Very, very powerful. Russia has like two or three bases. We have hundreds and hundreds. And again, this isn't America. This is globalists that have hijacked our nation that are doing this. And look at Brexit. Look at Russia getting out of globalism. I mean, aren't we seeing the rebirth of what I'd call the 1776 against far-off empires, you know, the modern King George III's? Absolutely. And we're seeing this, as you say, in, in all, not only in Britain, all across Europe, uh, I think the, the tide is moving in our direction. That's why we have to fear somebody like uh, Hillary, who's controlled by George Soros and people like him, uh, a total warmonger. Sometimes I wonder if these very elderly guys, I'm not criticizing elderly people, obviously, in general, but some of these very elderly guys like Soros, like Henry Kissinger, or like David Rockefeller, uh, these are evil men. Sometimes evil people would like to bring the whole world down around them as they're dying. I was interviewing a famous libertarian about a week before he died. I didn't know he was about to die. And all of a sudden, he sounded crazy on air. And he was like, we should just have riots and attack. And I was like, are you okay? And I learned he was in the hospital, you know, after I you know, got on the phone with him during a break. So, so even people that are peaceniks, when they're about to die, kind of get delusional sometimes. Well, uh, I think we have to fear Soros, fear David Rockefeller, fear Henry Kissinger, fear Haim Saban, all these people who are the oligarchs, the Kochs, all these people. Would like who think they should run us we have no right to run our own lives run our own communities our own businesses our own charities no we don't have it they have the right to rule us this is an inhuman thing no regular person wants to rule the town next door let alone the country next door i was door, about to say my neighbors the are doing what they want the household next door no we have enough trouble running our own lives so that's the proper way to do it it's the libertarian way it's the american way uh, but we have these very damn dangerous opponents this is why this is, you know, they always say this is the most significant election of our lifetime. They say it with Romney and McCain and all but these. But this things. is. This is where this really is. This is this is a very significant time. They're going to try to steal it, uh, as you and Bev Harris point out. Um, we don't have to let it happen. But even if they do succeed in stealing it, it does not mean it's over with because there's going to be a peaceful, popular revolution in this country for freedom. Oh, I agree. Government. I mean, even mainline Chicago Tribune, Chicago, Chicago Tribune, as you know, and a bunch of top Democrats are saying she's got to resign. She'll be in jail in a year if she doesn't, or, or maybe before she even gets in the White House. LewRockwell.com, a lot of great Von Mies Institute information there. So much more. Uh, thank you so much for coming on with us. You're awesome. Great. Thank you so much for having me on, Alex. It's an honor, as always. It's an honor to talk to you. What, what a great patriot. And, you know, we look at the liberty movement today. It's Ron Paul. It's Lou Rockwell. It's people like that that built so much of the culture and systems we have to resist this dead culture of the lunatics. So that guy is, is just a hero to me. I know he's a hero to you. Just like you pointed out, Beth Harris is a heroine. And we're not here saying he's a hero, she's a heroine, Drudge is a hero, just to laud things. It's heroic to fight tyranny and change the world for good and try to stop World War III. It's heroic to try to save the voting machines and have good voting systems. It's heroic in a world of cowardice to stand up for what's right. And you're heroes, listeners. You're amazing. We need your support. We need you to get the books, the videos, the water filters, the uh, the high-quality storable foods at 30 40% off. That's going to end in a few days. Infowarsstore.com. We have great sponsors. Uh, also, Lysis for Lucis from Science and their solar generator systems. They've got a bunch of them. Go to PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com. It's expandable. It uh, has a wind input and even produces a, a pure shine wave power so you can run medical equipment or even military-grade electronics. What am I talking about? We're talking about uh, you know, war with Russia, cyber warfare, and all the new threats, the power grid. Solutions from Science is having a 
moving warehouse sale. Here are three reasons you should get one of their perfect power solar generator systems. It's the same one I have, the top of the line. And again, it hooks into wind power, you name it, it's amazing. PowerGridChaos.com, PowerGridChaos.com. They have a lot of other great systems on their website as well, PowerGridChaos.com, or simply visit PowerGridChaos.com. Don't forget, uh, United States Gold Vault. Um, will you and your family be protected when we have another economic meltdown? I believe an economic crash is coming. You should protect yourself with real money. Do you want to be a victim or do you want to be prepared? Take action with the company I trust, United States Gold Vault. Call today, 844-321-ALEX, 844-321-ALEX. They've created a game-changing gold and silver survival pack filled with physical gold and silver coins that would help safeguard what you'll need most in a financial crisis, real money, not paper. Don't wait till it's too late. Call United States Gold Vault now at 844-321-ALEX and you'll get a rugged double locked bank bag and securely store your gold and silver absolutely free. All right, we'll be back with the fourth hour. I'm going to keep posting into that with Rob Dew with more breaking analysis. History's happening. Please spread the word. Everybody you know, Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com, PrisonPlanet.com, Tip of the Spear. God knows that uh, I'm a wicked, fallen creature, but I love justice and I love God. Even down here in my foul nest, I know what side I want to be on. But you study history, God tends to use people a lot of times that aren't uh, the sweetest or the cutest creatures. And I'm certainly not one of those, but I'll tell you one thing. I don't like con artists. I don't like people that hurt children. And I got so mad Saturday that I was mad all the way through Sunday, and I had to really pray about it last night and just ask God for peace again because I'd had peace for about a week or two, and uh, it was really helping me get a lot more done. But I saw a big L.A. Times article with the headline that, oh, my gosh, a huge mystery. Hundreds of kids are being paralyzed, and nobody knows why. The vaccine insert says it causes that in a certain percentage. Her toddler suddenly paralyzed. Mother tries to solve a vexing medical mystery. They changed it after we started covering it. It's just weird. It, the, the headline was, you know, mystery, medical mystery is hundreds of children paralyzed. And what happens is they get, Guillain-Barre is one name of one neurological disorder that, that, that just lists a bunch of different spectrums of this. And folks, David Knight and Rob Dew and myself have interviewed the nurses and the doctors. And sometimes at night, I go through the tip boxes for like hours when I don't have the time. And my kids are in the room next to me wanting to see me because I feel so guilty. And it's not because I'm some goody two-shoes. I literally get feelings of burning, angry, n nasty guilt. I mean, I feel dirty. I feel evil uh, when I can't get the word out and defeat these people. People think, see, I'm the opposite of a power trip. People need to know I am burning sometimes with nausea to fight these people. Like a, like a pit bull on a chain, just, ah, 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 because I can't stop them. And they're like, well, my gosh, you're such a great. No, I know they're giving kids shots now, hundreds of them. We've gone from one in 30-something thousand to one in 58. South Korea is like one in 30-something. There's retarded kids everywhere. They go, don't use the word retarded. I'll use the word retarded. You're the ones covering up for them being brain damaged. And they've got polio-like illness paralyzing children all across the U.S. They're testing soft kills. I told you this 15 years ago about Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the vaccines they give, and then the kids all getting paralyzed, sometimes 60,000 a year in places like India alone. It's okay that you can't walk now, son. The doctors won't tell us, but they're good. So, we, we, you know, we trust them. Then they go to the Child Development Center to the state. You know, they came up with the 223 or the 556 in Vietnam and the Colt M16 because they couldn't have a full metal, a, a, a soft-tipped, under the Geneva Convention, bullet. What a joke. You can't shoot bullets to kill people. Or maim them. Any personnel weapons. So they did the 223-556 because it's so high velocity, it breaks up and actually has a fragmentation effect. That's the big secret about it. And I personally, if you're not too far away, I can take down elk better with a, with a 223 or 556 than I can with a 7 mag or you name it. And I've shot elk with 7 mags. I've shot them with... 500 Smith & Wesson handguns, you know, and I'm telling you, two through three of your close is better. But, but I'm digressing. It's the same thing. It's an anti-personnel weapon. Vaccines are a soft kill anti-personnel weapon. Folks, that's not my opinion. I am completely weaponized in this whole thing. All I do is track the enemy, okay? I know everything they're up to, basically. When I say everything, everything that's public, I'm on it. 
because they do the same couple hundred things over and over again. I basically know all their programs. And you understand the level of anger I have because I have children and I have empathy for my children. So he's have empathy for your kids. Just like if I saw some guy beating a woman up in the parking lot, I'm going to go stop him because I have empathy. I'm not a hero. I have instincts. I'm going to stop them. And I've just somehow got to learn I care too much. See, I see the public doesn't care at all. I care too much because I get so angry when I see the L.A. Times and everybody else going, CNN, gee, school just started. Suddenly, tens of thousands of kids nationwide, hundreds in L.A. are paralyzed. What happened? The frickin' demon insert says it, you murdering filth. You know what you did. So I was spending time this weekend with family, and I went to DrudgeReport.com, and I saw a link to this article. Her toddler suddenly paralyzed. Mother tries to solve a vexing medical mystery. And they changed the headline on Sunday. On Saturday, it was medical. We even have a screenshot of it. Rob Dew edited a video piece. I shot it. We uploaded it to him, and he got it out. Because even when I'm off, I have a camera person following me around now. That's how hard we're fighting. I'm not complaining. I mean, you can't drag me away from this. I was foaming at the mouth, actually, Saturday and Sunday, working like 10 hours a day on top of regular stuff. And I just can't stop. I mean, I, I, I know the inserts say it causes kids to be paralyzed. I know it causes cancer, neurological disorders, type 1 diabetes because it eats your pancreas. It says can cause pancreatitis, diabetes, flu shot, tep hepatitis shot, all of them say it. I know this. I've got the inserts. I've probably done 100 special reports or more showing it to you. And then I get angry because I uploaded one video, got like half a million views in a couple hours. This one I did only got like 35,000 views. It needs to get 100 million views. The people involved need to... You know what they need to have done to them. Imagine how they'd like being paralyzed from the neck down surgically. I'm not saying I want to do that because I don't want to do that to kids. I don't want to do it to you, but I got a little idea in my head that if you think it's so funny, how about you're living out of a straw for the rest of your life? I got three kids. Rob Dew's got four kids. And it, it, it flips a switch when you have kids. The people that mess with kids, that's why the media is always it's for the children manipulating us. It makes me want to throw up. They know vaccines have social control. They know they've done secret testing in them. They know there's secret government program giving liability protection to the companies. The program's public, but, the, but what they do is secret in it. They know all this. And they know why the kids are paralyzed. We've had the nurses on. In fact, we, I link in the report articles a year ago where we have nurses and doctors on. They go, no, they, they tell us under bioethics we've got to give all the preemies vaccines. And they, about half of them quit breathing or die when we do within an hour or two. So we put them on respirators. So they give them the shot they know is making them sick to follow orders. It's like Nazis shooting Jews, but then putting them on respirators. And then they put them on respirators to keep them alive. And I'm like, well, go public. Well, they'll fire me if I do. This is the crazy town. So with everything else toxic that we've proven is bad, bisphenol A, aspartame, uh, MSG, uh, you know, all the things they pulled out of food and water. They won't do this because it's big pharma and the government in, a, in, in collaboration with an agenda to make you take something. Now, I'm very pleased. I had great feelings of satisfaction today. See, I don't get satisfaction peacocking in front of a crowd getting an award. I don't get satisfaction pulling out the coolest car at the country club. I don't get satisfaction. No, no, I get satisfaction on seeing little plants grow in my backyard and... You know, seeing my kids grow up and be strong and, 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 and do the right thing. Not because I'm some goody two-shoes, but because you read Conlan Lorenz, Animal Psychology, the biggest, meanest predators have the biggest, sweetest sides as well to govern themselves. It's little cowardly filth that want to sneak around and do jackass evil against people and innocence and think that's power. Exercising oppression against innocence is not because you're powerful, it's because you're a piece of filth. And we will get our metaphysical hands around your necks. And we're very close. And you can feel our fingers sliding lovingly around your throats right now. Like Moby Dick with Captain Ahab. With a, you know, who are you? You're going to the bottom. You're going down 10,000 feet. You want to dive? You want to play the game? We're going down now. And you, I can feel the outcry of the maimed children. They're on respirators all over the country. They're dying every day all over the country. I, I know they pack the Dell Children's Facility every year when the shots start before school in, 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 in the uh, you know, uh, pre-kindergarten grade, the th three and four-year-olds. They give them 
they give them uh, the the shots and then it causes them to have pancreatitis and they lose their pancreas. So suddenly they tell them, oh, it's genetic. You have type 1 diabetes. They're just hitting them and hitting them hard and they know full well what they're doing with pleasure. And then they go, there's a mystery why there's so many autistic. Now there's a mystery why you're paralyzed. Oh, we didn't get your brain. You're still talking. Too bad he can talk. Uh, we don't know what that is. <laughs> now, the average doctor isn't actually going, ha, ha, ha. But behind the scenes, they know. They, they bring these kids in and it's the vaccines. That was in the 2000 document from the CDC that came out in 2002, where a congressman got in trouble leaking it because his grandson was brain damaged. I think that Congressman, he had to have his kid on a ventilator for a while, but, but but he came back. Too bad for them, I guess. Too bad for the globalist. They didn't get him, you know, right away. And he he leaked it for the congressman's name, but it's famous. ABC News picked it up to their credit, where they were totally controlled. That They said, I wouldn't give my grandkids or kids this. We've brain damaged tens of millions. And they said, well, we can't cover it up. We've just got to make sure they clean it up. You see, well, they didn't clean it up because it's on purpose. It's on purpose, just like injecting black people with syphilis at Tuskegee and the, and, the, and, the, and the airmen being sprayed with biologicals and all the other secret testing and the radiological testing that killed over 3 million U.S. troops. That was Time Magazine last week. They're doing it on purpose. So let's play this little boy from the L.A. Times. Let's analyze their piece. Let's humanize him. But, hey, he can walk now. He got better. Yeah, they have treatments for Ian Barre where he could have been walking probably in a day, not months. But see, sometimes they won't even tell you what the treatment is because they've got to say it while your kid gets where they can't even breathe and then have to go on a ventilator. And they're all standing there at the hospital going, sorry, we don't know what's wrong with it. You know, you could tell them and fix them right now. Shut up. We can't. We're not the ones that gave them the shots. Uh, uh, and if the doctors tell you, they're fired. So you talk about a test for control. It's how corruption works. You think Hillary was bad getting thousands of people involved in her illegal emails to blackmail and control people? Turns out that's what she was doing. She did it on purpose. They were tired of her blackmailing her, so other agencies leaked it. The Solicitor General of Intelligence released that info four years ago. Now, let's go back. They're corrupting you all, the nurses and doctors, getting you in on it, letting you know. It's all right if you put them on a ventilator after. Get the ventilators ready. <laughs> we're loving children. The, the bad justifies the good, or the good justifies the bad. When statistically it's even worse than what it, quote, protects you from. Then the big lie that, oh, you got to take the vaccine or you're hurting other people. Well, if you've had the vaccine, aren't you protected, Snow White? Gardasil has been banned in more than 30 countries last time I checked from Japan to India. Eight years before it was even approved, it was killing people right here in Texas where it had been approved for limited use. I've seen hundreds of local newscasts where the Young daughter at age 12 takes it and he becomes paralyzed or dies. And in some cases, their doctor even tells them the guard has still killed your daughter. Rob Dew, you know, I guess I want to apologize, though. It's, it, you know, because it is bad that I got upset. I should not get upset knowing this fact that they're just murdering kids and maiming them nationwide. I should just accept it and let them call me conspiracy theorist over at CNN while they get their talking points from Hillary. What a bunch of snot-nosed demons. They've made their bed. They've got to sleep in it, don't they? Yeah, it's really despicable the way they poison young children from uh, from the second day they're born. They're trying to inject them with these toxic compounds, to calling it medicine and uh, safe and effective. And, Alex, I just want to book in what you're saying. Uh, back in August, end of August, here's an article. Prominent district attorney blames vaccines for his children's autism. Now, this is a DA down in San Antonio, just south of us. His daughter and son were both affected by vaccines after taking him. His name is Nico LaHood, and he went on camera to promote uh, this vaxxed movie. But his daughter, uh, his infant daughter, suffered an autoimmune reaction shortly after receiving her scheduled immunizations. And it was really bad. It was bad where I had to tie her down to sleep because she would scratch herself and start, start bleeding and had eczema-like symptoms. Does that sound like safe and effective? But, but do, do, do. I know they, the thing is, it's in the insert it could cause you to be paralyzed. I know. So they just go, we don't know when we, you've interviewed, we've interviewed the nurses, yeah. so is David Knight, who call us, more should call us. But you should go public. It's, it's all over. Who cares? Exactly. The murder we, charges against the people on your bioethics board. They're a bunch of you. I'm explain something. Yeah. People ask how this happened. Margaret Sanger got David Rockefeller's father's money 
1901. By 1910, they had a bunch of clinics in New York targeting blacks and Puerto Ricans, for whatever reason, and Jamaicans. That was who they, and then they had IBM involved with these first computers called the Hollerith machine. That was like the Hollerith 1. The one the Nazis used was Hollerith 7 through 15. But just do, there's been, you know, Pulitzer Prizes given for this, folks. Just look it up. This is well documented. And then they, they, they said, we're going to call it liberal, and we're going to come in and take over the communities and pay off their preachers, and we're going to set up these health boards and these health departments claiming it's for hygiene. They called it racial hygiene. And so they would just run around, and they would grab the kids and take them and sterilize them, or they would give them shots that sterilized them, and then they came out with the vaccines as well, and from day one we're always putting stuff in them. Hell, I got Sock and others on video admitting they added cancer virus to all the polio shots. So, so my grandmother got polio one week after she was given the polio vaccine, and it was the strain she was given. I mean, this is all hidden in plain view. This isn't our first rodeo, folks. But now they're not just going to have a few million people with polio. They're going to brain damage a third of our kids every year or more. And again, just like the 223 round, I'm going to skip this break. It's not meant to kill like a full metal jacket. 308, it's meant to maim and put pressure on the society to collapse it. So they're putting pressure on childbearing where childbearing in the actuaries becomes too expensive in the overall average. So you've got to get state help on average to raise children, which brings in more vaccines, more government diet, more school lunch. So they've got you in a government soft kill cancer incubator that's compartmentalized. They control silent weapons for quiet wars. I'm giving you Pentagon document names right now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you notice the government's listening to us. Foreign governments listen to us. Do you really think Russian state TV listens to us and runs clips of the show because they think I'm playing games? Russia has banned all the GMO. They're promoting having kids. They have national TV admitting it's an anti-family program. They've put hosts on that sound just like me. And it's not because they're getting my talking points. What I'm telling you is total truth. We're under military attack by the eugenicists that set up the health boards, that run the modern hospitals, and they've all got it hidden. I have a friend. We were out on a boat about six months ago on his boat with his brother-in-law and his sister and his wife and my kids. And they said, we're going to go have the kid. Hold on. I said, they're going to take you in. They're going to they're gonna say you've been in labor even a few hours. You need to take this hormone to, in, to, to induce labor. Then they're going to have a computer d desk. They're going to ask you to take a file down the stairs or to another floor. When you leave with the file, they're going to ask your wife if you have plenty of money or if he beats you. That's going in a health department database to take your kids if you answer it. They're going to take blood. If they find any marijuana, they're going to take your child. They're going to put it with CPS. And I'm telling them this is going to happen. And the guy said, they're both listening to me. And then I go, now next, what's going to I do this to every, every family I run into that's pregnant. Even on the street now, I did it twice this weekend. Because I, I, I have a responsibility to break out of their control and, 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 and break out of their system. It looks crazy to people in a trance. This is normal human activity. I'm warning people. And then I said, then, about four or five hours later, there's no way your cervix, I said you can Google this, is going to soften because they artificially induced it that quick. So in 90% of the cases, you, the baby's going to start being delivered earlier without the cervix expanding and being softened. That will cause then heart rate to drop within about seven, eight hours on average. So I've had three kids. I know about it. Uh, just to be the first time. It's not even their fault. It's just how the system's actu uh, uh, actuary. Then once that happens, they'll then say, oh, the heart rate's dropping. we got to go ahead and do a cesarean. That's how they've gotten Travis County up to 60% cesareans. Soon they'll say it's a conspiracy that children were ever, ever vaginally born. I'm not joking when I say that. We've got their dehumanization plan. The average doctor's not involved. They're busy, overworked, paying off debts, following the whole system, following computer orders. They get through the health department, through the central committees of the bioethics boards. And Obamacare globally only codifies that more. Then your bill won't be 10000 It'll be 60000 I was told by the brother-in-law and by the brother, who's my friend, he works here, that word for word, exactly what I said happened exactly as I said it would in the exact order. I've had three kids. We broke that secretly since the 60s. All blood, or late 60s, is taken at birth and put in a Pentagon UN database. Lawsuits were filed in Travis County off our intel. It all came out and was true. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you about shaving votes. I told you about algorithms. It's all come out now, Bev Harris. I told you about the Federal Reserve being private. That's like saying the sun's yellow. I told you about their whole program because they think you're dumb. They write books about it. Now, Bev Harris, 
a cut down interview from the bombshell today that's gone totally viral. The total proof of, of election fraud, the biggest election fraud news ever in Bev Harris's own words. The key to the whole deal is coming up, but, but I'm going to hand the baton to you, Do It's just that I get pissed because my energy is physically war. I mean, when I realize they're killing kids all around me, the, and there's a giant scientific program against me is to get highly motivated. Now, I understand, I'm not bragging here, but you know, not everybody's family found in Texas or whatever. But the point is, is I've got the genetics to resist this, and I believe everybody else has got the genetics to stand up against this. I mean, you look at little kids getting paralyzed and killed, folks, it should motivate you to get highly aggressive. So I'm proud of the fact now my kids aren't embarrassed to be on the street when I march up to people that are pregnant. And I start telling them, watch out, they're going to lie to you and take shots now. And the good news is I talked to two pregnant women and their husbands over the weekend that I saw. And they both said, you know, you're right. They told me to take the flu shot. I know that's bad. My mom told me, thank you. You're right. What the hell's going on? So the good news is, dude, we're breaking through their comfort zone. We're breaking through their matrix. We're breaking through them saying we're kooks. We're, we're flopping around like wild animals on the ground, but we're getting out of the nets, man. We're It's like Planet of the Apes. We're breaking out of the cages, brother, and yeah. I can feel it happening right now. Exactly. I have, I have the same type of story. A friend of mine, his, he was going and having a baby. I said, hey, they're going to come in with the uh, MMR shot. They're going to come in with the vitamin K, and they're going to say, they're going to tell you, look, it's safe and effective, safe and effective. They're going to use those exact words. Just watch. And they, they came in. They said, oh, I want to give them the shot. He's like, no, we're going to wait. They go, but it's safe and effective. And he was like, holy crap. You were absolutely right. They just... They come out and then they kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And, and he said no. And he stood up. And now, you know, his kid's fine. He's By the not, way, the first time I said no to all this and the nurse's letter went, you're right. We don't do it, too. We know it's hurting the kids. We give it to the preemies and they get sick. And then years later, they, you know, we, yeah. they, I mean, they know, too. They're oppressed. Right. And it comes out. They even know they have the ventilators ready because they know when they give the preemies these shots, they start having trouble. They start having autoimmune functions. And it's what happens up in the brain. We, we talked to Dr. Blaylock years ago about this. It's not even the physical things. It's that like happen fifty in your body. bee stings to the to, to the preemie. Exactly, and and so your body goes into like fighter. It's like mode. a bee sting. To, this way, a doctor described it as, as a layman term. A regular vaccine is like a bee sting to your eight pound nine month baby that just got born. You know, nine months in the womb. To a preemie, it's like 20, 30 bee stings, folks. Yeah. Okay, they're having an autoimmune response. They're dying in front of you. My God, it's so common sense. And they know about this, and they say, oh. The studies say everything's safe. They've never done any studies to see the autism vaccine link. Well, or just an they, well, 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 they do have small level studies in, in foreign countries, but never, right, never, it's never a countries. It's CDC never sanctioned study because right. they won't pay for it. Exactly. They don't want to see this truth come out because they like this program. This program My keeps dad you and wired dumb. people's jaws, okay? Okay, my dad was an oral surgeon, wired people's jaws. He did, you know, he was a, he was a professor in Dallas of dental surgery. Um, and I mean, I'm just put it to you this way. He's a smart guy. He hadn't told me everything he knows. But he told me when I was going to get my my my, my uh, driver's license when I was 16, he said, don't sign the organ donor card. And I said, why? And he goes, because I have to know there are hospitals where they kill people and take your organs. And I said, what do you mean? He said, just trust me. I didn't believe my dad, but I still said no. Years later, it came on 60 Minutes. The very hospitals he mentioned in Dallas were the ones they were killing people, including ones in Austin and Chicago. Now, the point is, is that I didn't know at the time that my dad like did dental work on the CIA and all this stuff, and, and they tried to hire him and stuff. I didn't know all the stuff he'd seen. But the point is, the public needs to stop being so damn naive, folks. We have got predators running things. That's all I'm telling you. Yeah. And you, get, you just have to look at, look at the infant mortality rate in our country it's compared up. to the rest of the world. We're number five, you know, Turkey, Mexico, Chile, Slovakia, then the United States. And then you go down, you know, Hungary's got a better infant mortality, Poland. These places do not vaccinate their children as much. They still have a program, but it's not nearly as much. Here's, here you can see the United States, number five. That's pathetic. That's pathetic that we've let ourselves just get drugged down. I'll tell you what's pathetic is the public's in a TV head trance. I don't know what's going on. Now, I, I, right. I, I, I held over and I'm handing the baton to you. I'm, I'm pretty exhausted right now, folks, because the Bev Harris thing floored me. Thank God everybody else realized how big it was. That is going so viral right now. Infowars.com. We're going to add an 11 minute video that he's about to premiere that's a cut down of Bev Harris that is just. You know, epic details of what Drudge is linked to. Um, I want to thank Drudge for linking to it. Obviously, Drudge links to the truth and what's important, but Bev Harris is highly respected. Uh, but uh, just before I go any further uh, here, I want to just tell folks about the sponsors that make it all possible. Revelations, Dawn of Global Government. Uh, this is a Chuck Undersea, spent five years making this. It's got uh, G. Everett Griffin, Joel Scalzen, myself, Alex Jones, General Boykin, and so many others in it, like Gerald Salente. 
Covers a range of topics such as privacy, and 21, the Federal Reserve, globalism versus nationalism, much more. Visit Revelation the Movie Don Info to purchase the DVD or to check into hosting into the theater near you. Revelation Don of Global Government, absolutely imperative. So check that out today. Uh, again, that's uh, Revelation the Movie dot info. Revelation Movie dot info. And then in closing, we need funding. I don't. I skip half our breaks. I just skipped one. I I, I don't hardly plug but once an hour, and uh, you still come through. Uh, we got Brain Force, the special ends today, the great nootropic, 25% off. Uh, we've got 30 to 40% off super high quality storable foods, InfoWarsStore.com. Even if you're awake, if you're dependent on them, they can control you. Now is the time to get a basic firearm and firearms training. It's very inexpensive. Now is the time. The local shooting range will have an instructor. I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's harder to turn a blender on, folks, and, and blend strawberries with, with whey powder, you know, for your kids than it is to shoot a 357 Magnum. I mean, it's just so super simple. Just go get one, a shotgun, whatever. Get you know, get an instructor to show you. you. And I'm not selling guns. I'm just saying you need that. You need storable food. You need water filtration. You need to just plant gardens in your backyard. Just as a spiritual act of humans becoming productive again. You know, it's it, it, it's more of a spiritual act I've learned or a ritual. Planting food, planting gardens is a ritual. Uh, just get back in the soil. Uh, we've got a lot of specials. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. But I'll close and say this as I hand the baton to do. All of life is a ritual about whether you care or not. And I apologize for the way I act sometimes because I am on fire against these people. I know they're bad. I cannot stand them. And I, I just want to rout them. It's, it's not some devilish wish to hurt them. They're like dog crap. I don't want to put my hands on them. I want to get them off the children. I want to get them off the innocent. I want to get them off this species, and I want to go to the stars. It is a demon-like infestation we're facing. And whether it's real or metaphysical or, or, or archetypal, the point is it's real one way or the other, and it's happening now. It's happening now, and you can save people. You can warn people. You can get outside your comfort zone. You can take action. You have, so I salute you. Big articles on Bev Harris's bombshell going up to InfoWars.com as we speak. Please, we'll update the article that's on Drudge, but get them out to everybody you know, InfoWars.com. We'll be back with Rob Doob. All right, we are back for the second half of the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in, and I want to go over a couple of these articles before we play that Bev Harris uh, video snippet from today, from the from the interview she did with Alex earlier today. Amazing interview. A lot of information there, too. And uh, if you don't understand what a decimal point is, it's the the point after. So it's point zero zero zero, And that's what they're doing. They're turning uh, votes into fractions. And by doing that, they could just say, well, we're going to give so-and-so 43%. And the computer makes all the calculations and does it. And then there's no way to tell how it's being stolen unless you get the images of the ballots. But let's go over a couple of articles. This is from Paul Joseph Watson. Polster, the dam is about to break on Hillary. Voters abandoning established candidate in droves. And this is from uh, pollster Pat Cadell, who said she's hemorrhaging support as the FBI announced they're going to, uh, you know, go in and look again at her emails. And now they're finding 650,000 new emails. It should be a treasure trove of, uh, of yoga poses, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, they compared it to Ronald Reagan when he won as the anti-establishment candidate back in 1980. It's hard to think. Uh, I was a kid when Ronald Reagan was elected, and uh, for me to think of him as anti-establishment. But when you go back and actually look at what he was fighting for, he did have some of those tendencies until they shot him, and then he became a good little boy. Uh, here's another one from Breitbart. Poll, Donald Trump plus four in Florida jumps 19 points among Cubans. And we've heard a lot of chicanery going on. Apparently, Hillary Clinton was having meetings with election county officials in Florida who are guaranteeing her a, uh, a, a to go to her. I got a call from a pollster over the weekend, a poll watcher, who said, hey, I've had five people in the last day come up to me and said they they were told they already voted when they went up to vote. And they said, oh, but it's all being fixed. The election commissioner is just allowing them to vote on a provisional ballot. For one thing, I don't know if they always count these provisional ballots. Sometimes they don't. And another thing is you got two votes that offset each other. Some already voted for candidate A and the other person comes and votes for candidate B on the provisional ballot. They offset each other. So that was five in one county. And that was Manatee County, by the way. I tweeted out about that yesterday. So let's go. Now that we've seen how this stuff is going to happen in all the different ways, there is a master way they're doing it. And it's through the electronic voting machines. We've been telling you that for years. You, you know, you go to these other countries where they want to have say, uh, uh, fair elections and they're dipping their thumb in purple ink to show that they voted. 
And I, I honestly think that's what we should go back to. And uh, we should go with paper ballots. And then we don't need these damn electronic voting machines to steal everything for us. I'm sorry. You know, it, it, it is 2016 and we should be able to do this the right way. But we know we can't trust the people who are supposed to be in charge of these elections. They've proven time and time again that they're culpable. They can be bought off. They could have political preference. And there's just no way to make sure it's done unless it's done by paper ballots with three people watching the count at the same time in the tabulation. And you purple thumb everybody so they can't vote twice. So let's, there it is right there, the purple finger. I guess that's from uh, one of those Muslim countries where, uh, you know, that was in Iraq probably when they were uh, voting for their president uh, in the last election. So let's go to this snippet of Bev Harris talking about how our votes are stolen, how it doesn't matter. Even if we catch Hillary in the act, even if we catch her with a dead body, it doesn't matter. She's going to win the election anyway. Let's roll it now. So you have found the mother load of election fraud. Yeah, it, it tells you how to do everything. Is it not clear that Hillary and the media are trying to sell the idea that there is an election fraud and that Trump's going to lose by a landslide when the polls and everything else show something opposite? Let me put it this way. Uh, of course, things have been very surprising of late. But if she is still viable in any way, whether or not she wins, she will win. some new information and I, I think it's the the missing piece uh, that we didn't have before a gentleman by the name of Benny Smith out of Memphis Tennessee um, discovered what I would characterize as a, a master key which essentially lets one person control with invisibly and with remarkable precision down to the precinct level and down to the type of voting early voting and so forth or whatever type they want uh, many different locations at once, multiple counties and multiple states. It has actually been in the system uh, since it, it, it was put in the system in 2001, but it, was, it came into wide use in 2006. Uh, but it kind of took someone with a special set of skills to know what to look for. Uh, he didn't just you know, like, do like most of the people did, where he says, well, let me just look at the program and see what I think. He is a guy who has some background in political uh, forecasting and so forth. And he knew uh, what would be needed. He kind of went, let me design what I think would be needed in order to succeed with widespread election fraud. And after he did that, he went, now let me see if the pieces that I know are necessary are built into the system. They should not be. And he was amazed when he found, after looking at the files, that the pieces were built in to commit very large-scale fraud using a feature that had been very little known before. Well, you know, the thing that he felt was needed, which uh, I didn't really understand until I met him and actually started putting together this video, he said the one thing you need, the key element, is you need to have the votes counted as fractions. You need the votes to be counted with decimal places, like you count money. You have to have um, not just if a vote is a dollar, you also have to have cents on the end of it. It's like 16,000.31, right? Why do you need – now, that will not show. It's hidden. But you need that because – and he, he said, you know, you never – there's one thing you don't know, you can't know before the election. And that's how many people will show up at each polling place in each precinct. So if you start doing things like I'm going to do every third vote or I'm going to add 100 votes here, you're going to get, you're not going to be very precise. Instead, you need to do what in finance they call an allocation. You say, whatever number of people show up, the guy is going to get X percent of those votes, whatever they are. Now, think about this. If you have 100 votes, and you say, my guy's going to get 43%. That's 43 votes. But if you have 99 people show up, what's going to happen? You're going to end up with 42 point something, something, something votes. So if your system is not capable of counting votes with decimals, it can't do that allocation. And what, so what he did was he knew that that's how it would have to be done. And it would have to be very specific down to the precinct level. The databases can be configured any way you want. And they should be configured and used to be configured to count each vote as a whole number. That's called counting it as an integer. He went in and looked and said, let me see. It should count it as a whole integer. They had changed the setting 
in all of the voting machines in America. Uh, now, this is the master computers. This is not the machines out in the precincts. This is the master computers that control all the voting machines. Bev, Bev this is incredible. And, and again, time and time again, you and your researchers tirelessly around the country have exposed the different ways they're doing it. And so I guess as a you know, top you know, fraud investigator, you're able to reverse engineer, okay, if we are going to steal it, how will we do it? Let's look for this. And then sure enough, you've, you know, you've caught them dialing in remotely. You've caught amazing. them. Yeah. You know, with you, in other words, anybody can sit there and go, well, this looks like a vulnerability, theoretically. This is not a theory. This is real. This is something that was put into the system. They actually changed the setting. We can actually go back and figure out now that we know it exactly the date that the setting was changed and that it migrated to all the other manufacturers in the U.S. So now at this point, the setting is in there to be able to allocate votes by percent to in, in basically 99% of the votes in the U.S. And then he went on and he, he basically proved it. He said, now that I know that's in there, I think I can allocate the votes. And it is stunning when you see the demo. It's Let's be clear. Let's be clear. You're, you're fighting this in the voting software. You go in. It's this algorithm or system to be able to basically program it to show the outcome you want by shaving votes. I mean, in, in a lay person right. uh, uh, who's not a, you know expert like you or a top uh, computer programmer, what's happening? So there's this one central computer, which at the end of the day, all the votes come to it. That's where you take it. You don't run around to 5,000 different things in precincts. You wait till the votes come to you, and then you have your way with them. And uh, it's very, very precise. Uh, it's invisible. And uh, there's absolutely, it doesn't matter whether the system's on the internet or not. None of the stuff that they say is the protection matters at all. You have your way with them. Um, then you, once you control the votes in whatever way you want, for whatever target you want, this can be done by one or a couple of people across whole jurisdictions. I actually um, didn't want to write the story unless I was absolutely sure. So not only did I see him do it, but I had him show me how it was done, and uh, I took some vote databases, real vote databases that I have. One of them was the entire state of Alaska, the vote database from the 2004 election. I was able to change every precinct in, in the state of Alaska in four seconds. Is it not clear that Hillary and the media are trying to sell the idea that there is an election fraud and that Trump's going to lose by a landslide when the polls and everything else show something opposite? Let me put it this way. Uh, of course, things have been very surprising of late. But if she is still viable in any way, whether or not she wins, she will win. Wow. Please say that again. Whether or not she wins, she will win. Now, she may be from, removed from office afterwards. And, and as you may recall, Richard Nixon was right in the middle. He had been four months into Watergate scandals and was reelected and removed from office later. Um, but what's so disturbing about that is... You know, there's actually some Republican elites who might prefer getting her in and removing her from office. Oh, okay, of course, of course, of course. They can't control. Of course, exactly, exactly. The whole power structure uh, is against Trump. I mean, whether he's perfect or good or bad, I mean, if we claim we're against the corrupt power structure, then how could we not be for Trump? I mean, I'm sorry. I'll say this as well. Um, whatever anyone thinks about the candidate, I will say that... When he has brought to the front the issue of tampering with elections, it's one of the most important services that could have been done in the United States ever. You're the expert. What headline do we put on this, Bev? Uh, you're going to have to choose the headline. <laughs> I know. I just want to be totally accurate. A vote fraud e uh, expert, Bev Harris, exposes, uh, you know, uh, the big enchilada, or, I mean... You know, it's, I, I just call it the magic key. I mean, it, it really literally is. You picture a janitor going down the hall with the master key jingling at his side. He can open any door with it. There you go. You know, we've basically got... So you have found the mother load of election fraud. Yeah, it, it tells you how to do everything. And, you know... It's it, you really can uh, can see it depicted, and it's just. And I know you want to give this fellow credit. We are in a moment. I want to get him on yeah. and you back on. Please, please, please. I don't even want you on for months. You've been quietly working on this. Briefly, though, George Soros, sixteen states, his company. He's connected to others. He's been caught in a lot of stuff. What do you make of that? Yeah, um, I have seen some in.
indicators. Now, there's a company called Dominion. There has been some uh, mistakes where people thought that there, the Smartmatic was being used. No, Smartmatic hasn't been used here. It's been used in Latin America and a bunch of other places. But he's connected, I think. It's kind of through a couple of hoops, but with a company called Dominion. And Dominion is one of the ones that bought the premier Diebold stuff, and they have now admitted that they fractionalized the count. Whoa! Mm-hmm. So a, a Soros connected group? Uh, again, uh, it's you know it's sort of connected through a couple of arms lengths, but it is it, it's enough so that I I, I wouldn't call I, I think there is some connection. It's just um, it's like one of his guys guys. So I mean, it, it, there's always going to be a couple of, of buffers uh, in between. But, but Soros connected group. Um, it looks like maybe admitting to be involved in, in the whole fraction deal. Wow. Oh, they are. They have. Yeah. They. They. One of their top guys said that they did it. There's a um, person. There's a group called Defend the Vote in Illinois, and uh, the woman involved with that, Sharon Maroney, uh, actually confronted Dominion and said, and they admitted that they do fractionalize the count. And she asked them why, and they said, for marketing purposes. Wow. They hide it in plain view. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they do it for marketing purposes. We steal the vote for marketing purposes. Now, let me show you this Ben Garrison graphic right here on the screen. Uh, double trouble emails bubble. Huma's tears and ear of pig. This election I shall ring. <laughs> and look who's in the background taking selfies of himself. That pretty much sums it up right there visually as to what is going on in this country. Now, you can find the full, I think we have the the short video up um guys pull that up so i can give people the headline it went up while i was in here but we're gonna have everything on how america's elections are hacked missing link discovered so that's there on drudge right now and if you click on that we should have that video that 10 minute excerpt there and we'll have the full video up very soon from bev harris at blackboxvoting.com now what's going on also as a fallout to this hashtag hillary for prisons trending on twitter after FBI reopens the Clinton investigation. So you can go to that article as well on InfoWars and read all the tweets. Um, it's pretty good. And uh, ah, and they spelled it. I guess they spelled, they were spelling, adding an extra I to prison because uh, the hashtag was blocked from trending. So they just changed it around and then kept going. Um, and people are saying, stop censoring Twitter. Your goose is cooked. So there's that. Here's an interesting little little tweet that I uh, retweeted over the weekend. How to catch a Hillary voter. Never wanted to catch one in the act. You put up some Trump signs right alongside the road, but you put nails in front of the first one right there. So when they run it over in their car, oh, they have to go change a flat tire, and then you can find out who's been uh, running over your Trump signs. So that's how these people play dirty tricks. They can't take the truth, and they're going to be so happy when she steals it and then if they kick her out of office, well, we're going to be stuck with Tim Kaine. It should all add up to just amazing uh, coverage all over the board, which will be running here starting uh, Monday. So Monday, a week from today, starting at 11 a.m., running all the way to Wednesday at 3 p.m., we're going to have 52 hours of live coverage here at Infowars.com forward slash show. You can join us there. We'll also be streaming it on our YouTube channel. Uh, but Infowars.com forward slash show is the main link that you can send out to your friends and family right now. You can watch this show every day for free. You could uh, go to it any time of night. It's just running the rebroadcast. It just loops. And But please join us at that time. We're going to have amazing guests. It's going to be 24-hour uh, 24 uh, 24 hour coverage for Monday and Tuesday. Well, I guess Monday we start at 11, go all the way through. Tuesday will definitely be 24 hours, and then go into Wednesday till the end of the show, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central, where we'll be running 52 hours of coverage. So let everybody know. We're going to start promoting that hot and heavy today and uh, for the rest of the week because we want you to join us and participate. We're going to be having calls. I didn't have time to get to calls today, but I, I would love to hear your reactions to what happened with this new information coming out from Bev Harris where they basically rig it in plain view by using percentage points on uh, on the votes. So there it is. We're going to come back one more segment. I'm going to show you a new WikiLeaks has come out that Joe Biggs discovered this morning. And uh, show a quick video from him. 
And this just proves that they're all compromised, and they all will be. These people cannot be trusted with anything. So uh, it's time to drain the swamp. This is Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com. Infowars.com forward slash show is the link where you can watch everything live. James O'Keefe doesn't want the credit. He wants to beat these people, but here he is joining us via Skype uh, with Mr. Stone. So a great surprise to have you there with Mr. Stone. Hey, thanks, Alex. Uh, Roger's here because we're going to be releasing a little video tomorrow where uh, Roger makes a little cameo in it. So he's in my office and he said you were doing the Skype and it's great to be here. Tell us uh, the latest. Uh, give us some hints on what's going to be uh, breaking your take on what I just broke down. And then, of course, Roger, who's heading up the national operations uh, grassroots to, to stop the steal, can fill us in. We released four installments of the series. This week, we found out that Hillary was personally involved, personally involved. In, in, in dressing people up at these protests to elicit a violent reaction. And the White House has been asked about it, and Trump brought it up in the debates last week, as you saw. So you guys have been mirroring, I guess without even knowing, the intel WikiLeaks has, but then showing it in the real world, confirming it in triplicate. And then you've also, again, have Hillary confirmed in the videos that she's giving the direct orders and what Hillary wants, she gets. And then we have the new WikiLeaks, with Podesta saying, you know, Hillary's crazy, what the hell is she doing? And we have the other emails saying, we're covering it up. We've got to, you know, uh, clean all this up. I mean, we have them now. Yeah, I think, I think this is her Achilles heel. The fact that I thought the voter, the voter fraud is important. The, in, the inducement of violence at the protests, that's a smoking gun. And she hasn't even denied it. I mean, she w won't even address it. When she was asked on the airplane late last week about it, she, they said, well, what, did you, what do you have to say for yourself? She literally ran away and said, time to get food. But someone has to continue asking her over and over again, what do you have to say for yourself for, for dressing people up like Donald Duck? It's a stupid, silly thing that she did, but she did it. I mean, this is premeditated. This is absolutely uh, criminal. Politically, even if she crawls over the finish line and steals the election, which is getting scarcer and scarcer, it looks like, as a chance, she's going to end up getting indicted. I mean, she makes Nixon look like... A saint. No one ever proved that Nixon knew about the break-in at the Watergate, and he was removed essentially for dirty tricks and illegalities pertaining to the 1972 election. Uh, what Hillary is, as James says, you got the smoking gun. There's massive evidence of election fraud. O'Keefe, again, and his crew blew it wide open, the premeditated, like something out of a Batman movie where they're rubbing their hands together, giggling about how no one can stop them. <laughs> I mean, literally, for listeners who just tuned in, go to Project Veritas and watch the videos for yourself. Now even more is coming out. What do you expect them to do? I mean, do they have enough bravada? to actually try to steal it now that we have them on video admitting they're stealing it. But wasn't the whole lesson of Watergate, no person is above the law? Isn't that what the liberals said over and over again in the uh, when they removed Nixon? Now it's very clear that, uh, that certain people, call it elite deviants, if you will, certain people get a pass. segment of the Alex Jones Show. This is the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I got a quick video I want to go to uh, here in a second with Joe Biggs talking about this latest Podesta email. There have been thousands of them, 21 or 22 releases so far, and just each one has its own little treasure trove. This one focuses in on how basically everybody in your government's using a Gmail account. So, you know, everybody's hackable at this point. And if nothing else, all these messages are going to Google. What, what do you think kind of power that gives them? So here's that video. This is Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we have another Podesta email dump that's been provided to us by WikiLeaks. And this time we've got some very damning information that has come out. But before I get to that, just a reminder, we are days around the corner from being able to have our next president. Will it be... Hillary Rodham Clinton, the most corrupt politician known to man, or will it be Donald J. Trump, the man who says he will make America great again? Now, we've seen a lot of these emails come out, and they've been damning time and time again, and yet people are still willing to go and turn out and vote for Hillary Clinton, even though we know that she is so corrupt. There's so much blood on her hands, and there's so much secrecy surrounding this presidential candidate that claims that she is transparent. 
And now we have this brand new email. It's from Tom Nides. He is the former Deputy Secretary of State. This email is to John Podesta, the chairman of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. For what it's worth, there is only one thing that needs to be done on this email thing, which I'm sure nobody wants to do. Get a State Department career lawyer to go through all the emails and pull the official ones. I know all the reasons not to do it, but it's going to happen, so we should do it. By the way, you know as well as I, every goddamn cabinet officer and White House staff uses their Gmail accounts. So they know that they're using this kind of information, that there is official emails, classified emails, that are being sent on Gmail servers. So there's a huge problem. We have people who are supposed to protect our national security interests, and they could care less about actually taking the proper steps, the precautions to safeguard that information from getting into the wrong types of hands. So I want to thank WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, and all the people out there that are tirelessly going through all these emails, exposing the corruption behind Hillary Clinton and her evil campaign workers. This has been Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. And let's not forget, let's not forget how Podesta got hacked. He got hacked out of a phishing expedition. So they sent him a link that said, hey, change your password. But it was a bad link. And they were able to absorb his password there and then go in and steal all his emails. So imagine every other uh, State Department official, uh, these employees, they all have uh, devices. And we don't know how these devices, they migrate emails. Huma's claiming she doesn't know how Anthony Weiner had 650,000 emails on his computer. Well, my, my guess is that he saw all the corruption going on and he was a low-level demon minion and said, you know what, I better grab these and keep them on my computer just in case because I may need to get out of jail free card at some point, especially if Hillary gets into office and they, these charges start coming up. I could say, look, I've got a whole computer with it, but he just couldn't keep his uh, phone in his pants. He had to pull it out and show everybody. And that's why he is now under investigation. So it just goes to show, I think he put it in a folder called life insurance, too. That's what's even funnier. But, uh, hey, the Hillary for Prison shirts aren't for sale anymore, but you can still get your Trump is my president shirt at Infowars.com. If you get it, uh, we can get it to you real quick. Wear it on Election Day or wear red on Election Day. So when they're showing shots of the polls everywhere, we know that people are voting for Donald J. Trump. They're not going to vote for Hillary Rasmussen poll. 40% of Clinton-leaning voters say they could change their minds with the latest announcement that's come out. And that's from Paul Joseph Watson today. Be sure you check Infowars.com for all the latest news that's going on. We're breaking it as, as quickly as it comes, so stay tuned to us. Thank you for your support. Go to Infowarsstore.com. You can support us even more. Become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv and stay tuned for the nightly news tonight, 7 p.m. Central. And thanks for watching.